What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. I just see Kev in the chat. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. DK, member for 15 months. This is huge news. Yeah. <laughs> that's so amazing See, seeing the setup is so crazy back here like <laughs> is this live in the same place it is it is i'm seeing the setup live everybody I, I i know what randy's room looks like it's i see all the figures that everyone else knows about it's as good as you imagine there's even more than you probably imagined <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing Dak is West Coast now. Kev, you're correct. I'm fully West Coast. I uh, I got here yesterday, and now I'm I'm just moving in now. We're we're, we're here. Brandon King, three day. Appreciate you all sliding in. Yep. Shout out to Barry. Barry. Said like the stream. Hit that button. Like and subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. I hope you guys are feeling the vibe. This is a very special theory for theory. This is the first IRL in person uh, collab, not only for theory for theory, just on the channel in general. That is not me and Chrissy. Um, so the sky is literally splitting. <laughs> um, yeah, how's the audio, guys? Is it too loud? Or you know, like uh, that? That's that's just one thing that. This is all new. Yep. So I want to know, you know, in case we do something like this again, uh, I want to make sure that the the audio is, is, you know, is good. The setup is good. Everybody is feeling the vibe. Everyone says looks looking good. That's amazing. Cone Killer said, "You mean that one time with Teching didn't count? Well, that was at Teching's though. So that wasn't like this is this is on my on my channel." On your turf. Yeah, in, in my studio here. Uh, yeah, so I'm honored. I'm honored to be the first one uh, on the in-person Theory for Theory, guys. It's Also, Chrissy, I see you in the chat. Uh, nice, ni nice to see you here. I just met Chrissy also. Cr Chrissy is as nice as you guys probably all think she is uh, from the streams. Uh, so is Randy. Not, not, to, <laughs> not to take away from Randy's <laughs> kindness. Uh, but they're as great as you guys think they are. Uh, very hospitable, for sure. Back might need to be a bit closer. Maybe I just need to talk towards the mic. That might be the. That might help. Thank you very much. Yeah, that'll that'll be good. Um, but yeah, guys, the setup the setup is real. Oh, shout out to Saint Constantine with the ten memberships. Together we're stronger. Stronger together. Together we're stronger. Together. That's, that's that's huge, Saint Constantine. I think I think I owe you a Discord message. I think that's you. You sent me a theory, and I've just been I've been traveling. Obviously, I, I have one. evidence <laughs> that I'm here that I've been traveling. But I am going to answer another you. I saw one. that. At least I think it was you. If not, it was someone and else named Saint Constantine. But I'm pretty sure it's you. So I'll definitely answer that. Uh, yeah, W's in the chat for Saint Constantine. Appreciate that. Um, so the, the fun thing about this collab outside of being, um, I feel like I'm peeking here. Yeah. Vex also said there's reverb on my mic. I'm not exactly sure what to do <laughs> for that. Let's see. Appreciate you though, Vex. Turn my gain down a little bit. Sorry for the technical D difficulties here, guys. You know, like we're trying something new. This there's, is uncharted territory. There's so much hockey in the room that there's there's bound to be some difficulties. <laughs> Our audio isn't bad, still clear. Definitely reverb on mine. Is what they're saying. Um, I'm really sure. Should I? Which is strange because like that's the main microphone like you i'm really using the, i'm using the new one so there there really shouldn't be anything wrong with that one if anything i would expect this microphone that hasn't been used before to be is it maybe like my voice going into that one you know what i'm saying yeah probably probably um
my audio is clean. That's okay. interesting. So maybe, maybe, is it is it need to be closer? Is how's it sound now, guys? Uh, it sounds better now. Because they were saying I was clear. Oh, really? So it's this one? Yeah. Unless it's my voice going into that mic. But oh, but, but that would be weird. Too much microphone. Yeah, that's what I think it is. You loyal. <laughs> like, I'm dying with this. I just said in the chat I was dying. They, 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 they all say it's good now. They said don't touch anything. They said we're good. Is it cause I came in it's because Chrissy came in the room. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. You're welcome. Appreciate it. She, just a she, miracle worker. She fixed it with with her presence. Yeah, just hockey alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shout out to Lucy B. Wonder why we're in the same room? It's because uh, I showed up. I pulled up. <laughs> um, Savage. See, uh, shout out to Brandon. Who said uh, Randacted stream. <laughs> the Safro Tail Boys are here. I, I love it, Brandon King. Love it. Terrible TJ said, like the stream. Appreciate you, TJ. Uh, Paths said, an in-person theory for theory with some of my favorite creators. Today is a good day. Yeah. Major shout out to Paths also. Um, Eric Veltri, W for the two goats coming together. Dak Sake and Randy in person. Yes. That's my favorite one. <laughs> it's my favorite one too. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, easily. Easily. Um, can't wait to see what's cooking. And I love the OPLA poster, Randy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just, just put it there. Actually, like I moved the flag over and then just threw that there. It was Randy's, on the other side. Randy's got so much cool stuff, y'all. Like you guys can't see all of it. You guys have seen a lot of it during streams in the past, but like me getting to see all of it, yeah. It's a, it's like a paradise. You know what I mean? If you like One Piece, anything, this is this is a spot to be. Morge is live right now. We're competing with Morge. Would... Well, to tell Morge to come on over too. You know. <laughs> um. Anyway, the uh, one of the the things that makes this special as well is that we uh, this is the pretty much the year anniversary of the last time that we collabed in the first place. Uh, the first one on one, the first theory for theory, which was April second, and today is April fourth. Oh wow. Um, that's crazy. So, yeah. I mean, I've been trying to get creators back on like the year anniversaries to, for, for a while. And it's been working out with a lot of people, but the serendipity that you were actually like in LA yeah. on the year anniversary to come and do this, it's, like it's not crazy. for that, but just happened to be here. Like that's that, that's cool. Yeah. That's special. Like I'm actually here. Well, I'm here for a lot of reasons, but I'm going to go to the Cavs and Lakers game tomorrow. It's like one of the main things going to some Cavs games. And it just so happened that they play in LA the same weekend that the year anniversary is. So like, I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. You know what I mean? That's, that's some crazy uh, connections right there. So everybody's saying math piece. I mean, that, it, that is, uh, that that's right. This is, it, it's true. It also <laughs> vex. Uh, I was going to comment on that. You said serendipity. That's my favorite word. My channel. Well, some, most of my channel knows that's my all time favorite. Well, serendipitously, the adverb version of it. But uh, I say it all the time. So I love that you said that. Basically, Ve Vex caught it. Vex knows. <laughs> uh, uh, shout out to Mr. Bushido, who said, who's the next Nakama? He said carrot or carrot. <laughs> Choose one. Uh, that's tough. The, 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 those choices. Those two very polarizing, different choices. But uh, equal, <laughs> you know? But equal in some weird way. Uh, the answer is Vivi. It, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> you're, you're, you're asking the wrong person the question. You, everybody knows my answer. And also, I had some Bushido sake yesterday. Uh, so, and Bushido, I know I sent you the, the picture, but... Um, you know, a little, little, little collab there, I guess, between me and me and Mr. Bushido. Uh, let's see. Oh, 
Brandon uh, uh, specifying carrot from the minks or carrot from the Usopp pirates. Oh. Uh, I'm uh, let's go with uh, let's go with carrot from the Usopp pirates. He's already part of the fleet, as far as I'm concerned. You know, true. So true. Yeah. Um, no, I, I really, I really do like carrot, um, the mink. I just, I just think Oda fumbled the bag and Iwano with carrot. So it's, it, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I dunk on carrot, but like, I actually do like the character. Yeah. Same. I do the same thing. Like the, uh, you know, Bushido, I know I always send you that panel where, uh, Perospero says, go eat some grass. Like, I know I, <laughs> I know I send that, but like, I actually like carrot. It's just like, like you said, Oda dropped the bag a little bit, you know, drop the ball, whatever. But you know, it's, uh, carrot's not bad, but carrot's going to come back. And do something cool eventually, but maybe not join the crew. You know, Final War, bring the Minx, do something dope. But for sure, and I don't think um, I don't think she needs to join the crew at this point. I think everything's so cluttered. It's just like I mean, there's a reason why Oda didn't have uh, Kara join. There's a reason why Oda didn't have Yamato join. So we just gotta we just gotta let let him cook. Well, that's actually a good uh, question for you. Is what what do you think is going to happen with the cover story? Like, where do you think that's culminating? So that's that's one of the interesting things. And what I, I'll tell you what I hope isn't going to happen. Okay. And what I hope isn't going to happen is that Augur and uh, probably Pizarro pull up to get. Pluton, because I I don't want that to be in a cover story. I was already like mm -hmm. disappointed that we got the um, the Whole Cake Island stuff in a cover yeah. story, but I and you know shout out to them animating it. It looked great, that. but yeah, I mean I still feel like it could have been fleshed out a little for more. For sure, um, but I you know at least they actually animated it like in any form and made Van Auger look like the strongest character in one piece you know what i mean just and yeah in the like the same week that he said the world and it was just like I, I just got elevate like he, he went into the top 30 so quick for people <laughs> it was like it was like the week after the top 50 too yeah so the, the top 50 stream so it was <laughs> oda's so crazy with that um, but, but but as you were saying though um with the cover story well, i think you're gonna say something like the you wish they fleshed it out more or something. I forget exactly where you're going with it till I cut you off. Um, yeah, shout out to uh, Vex Lurking Legend for uh, joining the channel. Alejandro Salas who said, Carrot unlocked Sulong 2, Super Sulong. Yeah, you don't want to see Sulong 3 or 4 either. <laughs> um, uh, Super Sulong God. <laughs> uh, ultra, ultra, ultra Sulong. In, ultra Instinct Sulong. Yep. Well, uh, it's well, already be, based well, on instincts. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Vex. Wow, we are stronger together. That's crazy. Together we're stronger. Shout out to Vex. Major shout out. Together shot. we're stronger. That is you know, giving everybody the emojis. Drop those W emojis in the chat. Drop those those Tysons in the chat, those Ascensions. Um, and hey, I you know Vex. I did a stream with Vex a couple weeks ago. Y'all definitely go check it out. Vex is starting to cook some stuff, big time. So definitely, major shout out to Vex. Appreciate you. Shout out, shout out. Um, yeah, look at all the love in the chat. I appreciate that. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, basically, Oda did so much work in the you know not just the past year but i mean like almost like the past two years with like leaving egghead and showing us what's going on in the world that if we get something as important as an ancient weapon reveal in a in a cover story i'm going to feel cheated agreed and and then it, it becomes this question of like what what actually is important because I don't know. Like, I mean, it's fine if this is like a realistically no cover story has been less than like 20, you know, chapters. Mm -hmm. And it's like you figure with color spreads and how many breaks Oda takes, we're going to be in this cover story for the next year. Yep. So are we a year away from like all of that, a year away from what we're going to find out about Yamato, whatever we need to know about Momo for like the, the end game of the story. But now 
with Caribou being with, uh, you know, Devon and Augur, that's the kind of stuff that really should have, like, half to an entire chapter dedicated to Blackbeard learning that information and then dispatching his crew to be like, mm-hmm. okay, Augur, go to Wano. Yep. Pizarro, you go too, because you'll be able to sync with Wano. You'll be able to find Pluton because it's underground. Let's unearth it. Savage. That's smart. And then we will have this this ancient weapon. But the you know the issue there still is like Blackbeard has never once said anything about the ancient weapons. Love that you said that. Savage. He's never indicated interest. You know. Yeah. Was it, you could assume he probably wants them. You know who wouldn't? But what if he already knows, and that's why he hasn't cared because he already knows where they're at. You know what I mean? Like. The best subversion that Oda could do is Caribou shows up, says, hey, I know where the ancient weapons are. And then Blackbeard says either I already know or I don't care. Yep. And then it's Agreed. like, OK, what is his plan if he doesn't care about the ancient weapons? Like, mm-hmm. is there something more, you know, something bigger than 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 that? Something yeah. that's been set up since Crocodile was like trying to find yes. Pluton in the first place. And then it's like, oh, no, the entire thing about Pluton Everything in Water Seven, everything in Alabasta, was a ploy because they don't even matter. They're not right. actually going to be instrumental to the end game because Blackbeard's plan is something way different. So the one thing about that that I think is really interesting is when you consider like how Shanks knew Blackbeard's going to go to Wano and like why was he going there? Um, so you know he had was he going there for Pluton originally? Did he have a different plan? You know who knows? Yeah. Um... I saw that uh, you guys said for me to get closer to the mic. I, I move closer to the mic to breathe. Everybody remember that? Or, or no, I move away from the mic to breathe. Tays on day. Um, taking it back to the, <laughs> to the, the, the 2000s. Chocolate rain, right? Chocolate rain. Um, yeah. Uh, Miles is cooking right there. I know you got a couple supers, but just real quick, Miles is cooking. Uh, that's what I think is going to happen is we're going to get closure on Kaido and Big Mom in that cover story. That's what I want. Yeah. That 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 is actually, and I talked about that in the stream as well. Like if we if we get information on um, Big Mom being alive, that's what I want. I want Kaido to be dead. I want Big Mom to be alive. I want Big Mom to play a role in Elbeth. I want her to like. Um, yeah, she has to. Savage. Feel like. Yeah, what would actually be really interesting is. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I hope Smoothie drained the lava out of her. I'm sure you probably heard that theory before. Yeah, that was that was an original from Yamil. Um, like, I remember when Yamil said that in the chat. That was the first time that I heard that, and I still remember that. So it's like, it, and that's the other thing, too, is like, if that happened, it already happened. Mm-hmm. So, because... At it was the a end week of, ago. More than that. Uh, yeah. I right. mean, at at the end of Wano, they said that the Big Mom pirates escaped. If they escaped, they escaped with Big Mom, or mm-hmm. they didn't. And then the whole point is like it's a crew going back now that the you know the heat is off from the government, and they're on it like an expedition to find her. But it's like, did they split off? Because the other thing too is it's like I need Katakuri to start looking for pudding. Yes. Like who's looking for pudding? Pudding is is, is is captured now. Somebody needs to like be on the move. And Katakuri is like the big protective brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, like with him and like Brulee, like that's what we saw. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he would be the one to do it, or he should be. It would make sense. Um, and also like, you know, like Sanji's probably would also be very upset if he found out pudding was kidnapped. And so I also want that. I w- at least want him to find out and just see what he says. Not that he's gonna like leave and go try to save her right away, but. I think that would just be a really interesting plot line, you know? Yeah, I do want to see Sanji's reaction for sure. Um, shout out to Brandon. He said, uh, Croc awakens, Wano's walls become sand, Pluton check. Well, that was my that was my initial thing. Like when, you know, it was like really doubling down on um, Crocodile's uh, contact being Caribou. You know, Caribou being Mr. Ten, all that kind of stuff. I still want that. Uh, I still think that there's a, a world where it could still happen and Caribou is just like trying to save himself by getting off of the island during a buster call. So mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, I'll use this leverage 
to to get off the island here, but I still am subservient to Crocodile in some way. But for me, I know Blackbeard is like probably the final you know boss of all of this, if not Emu. But Crocodile introduced us to the ancient weapons. I want him to learn about Pluton. He told us about Pluton. So it's like if he went to Wano and the Cross Guild went to go and get it, like that's way more interesting to me than Blackbeard doing it. But Occam's Razor, Blackbeard has Pizarro. And it's like, why does this dude have like an advanced form of Pika's fruit? And we're told that it's underground. Mm -hmm. It The whole reason he has this fruit is because he has to go to Wano in my mind and find Pluton because he'll just, he'll find it immediately. And I think another thing is, like, I love the Pizarro idea, but I think Teach could also do it, right? Like, he could just potentially use the Gura Gura and destroy the walls. Because it seems like Zunisha is supposed to walk up and just bat it down with, like, its trunk or something, right? That seems, that seems like basically what it is. So, well, it would be cool if it was, like, a tag team. Like, like if Pizarro finds where it is, but then it's like, hmm, something, I like, I can't move it. Yeah. And then Teach comes and like, oh, let, let me do this. And then like we get this massive panel of Teach like breaking everything. And yeah. then it's like, there it is. Like, like that. That, that, the, the teamwork of it is, you know, something that I, I definitely want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, Vasil Vlad Ivanovici, super appreciate you. said, uh, just like Ors Jr. at the hands of Moria, what if Joy Boy, Ors the first, got killed by being impaled by Impel Down, previously known as Impale on um so i look i love the you know laugh tail raft tail you know one piece one piece p-a-c-e kind of mm -hmm. stuff um is does impel down like I, I don't remember like the top of the structure is it something that would be pointy enough to uh warrant that um i don't know but uh, I, I mean, I like the wordplay. Yeah, I, just, I don't know. I'm, I'm yeah. definitely on board with Ors be Joy Boy. Ors the first be Joy Boy though. I love that idea. Yeah, I'm big yeah. fan. Um, which there's a super that you know wants to get into all of that. Um, first, uh, Moog said uh, so. No rocks flashback in the cover story. Damn. Uh, <laughs> Oda Oda would would do that. Oh, I'm sure he, he's probably thought about it. Yeah. Um. Mr. Bushido super did and said, I, I think we need to see the flying six backstories in the cover. Oda said, Ulti and page one's dad was someone who knew Kaido long ago, maybe a rocks crewmate. Seeing Ulti and page one would actually be an interesting uh, departure from what we expect from this cover story. And I, you know, I think the next chapter will give us a little bit of context on what's going to happen. Cause it's like, we saw Yamato and Momo in the last cover story. If we see someone different in the next cover story that's mm -hmm. in Wano, then it's kind of like a Dex of the World thing. I buy that. Then we there's more uh, room for different things to happen that like can tie in later yes. and inform what's going on. If we're just following Yamato, then it's like, oh man, we've got you know we, we we've got a, a whole year of just Yamato Random. like exploring i don't even know look, looking at stuff yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like w and one thing bushido has said before in my streams about about this topic is uh what if yamato goes around and basically recruits the flying six like scabbards and so then because then because you know if yamato's meant to be running around like odin that's how odin got his scabbards was going around for a while like remember he went to curry and beat ashra doji who was like the leader of that area i actually love that yeah because it, they were already following Kaido, so now they're going to follow Kaido's, Kaido's son. Mm-hmm. That's um, a great idea. Yeah. Like, I don't know where that would go in terms of, like... Like, if Yamato doesn't join the crew, Yamato's still, like, an ally or, like, Straw Hat-adjacent type person. So it's like when the final war comes, are we, is that just... Are we just going to have the Flying Six working for us at that point? You know, like, that's that's my only question. is, Or maybe Yamato can leave then, because Yamato's like, okay, you guys are the next force to help protect Wano and I'm going to leave because you guys are strong enough. Cause that's kind of what Odin did, right? So even though that didn't really work out the way he wanted, but Odin like left and left all of his retainers behind and like they were supposed to like take care of things for him. You know what I mean? But how would we change their hearts so much? And in I that, and in that situation, it's like I could buy Ulti and page one Sasaki, maybe 
um, if we involve Denjiro in it and like their canon friendship like means Matters. like means something. Um, who's who? Uh, That's the toughest I, one. I don't. I don't see yeah. Drake is. He's I gone. doubt he's even on Wano. Yeah. And then who's the other one? Black Maria. Black Maria. Dead. Also dead. Please, dead, please dead or dead. Please dead, dead or or irredeemable. Uh, or not maybe not irredeemable, but at least in the context of Yamato getting Black Maria to join. I don't think that would be I, wouldn't be easy. Oda, do me a favor and just never show Black Maria in the story again so <laughs> that I can just continue to imagine that Robin broke her back. <laughs> <laughs> and it was over. Because you you you, you screwed the pooch on uh, on Spandom. Oh, true, true. Yeah, Yamato or not, Robin needs some some actual finisher. You know what I'm saying? Like like those are finishers, but like you think they would die in real life, they'd be dead. No, it's but, like her special ability. She told us is assassination, and meanwhile, yep. like her body count is zero. <laughs> true. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's actually a really good point. I, I, I mean, if Black Maria is at least like in a wheelchair or something, you know, at least something. I don't know. That sounds like something Oda would do. Uh, well, I mean, or it, something it did put the uh, unluckies, uh, what Miss Miss Friday, in a neck brace. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, something like maybe she has a big back brace or something. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Black Maria in Who's Who, I, I can't really see, you know, like listening to Yamato and like being kind and like trustworthy enough to leave behind. But like Sasaki and Ulti in Page One, I could maybe see. Yeah. Just the the protecting Wano thing, like it it works as a idea to like parallel everything, but when you actually take into consideration all of the, uh, you know, just the just the, the, character, the, the characteristics of the characters, then it, it becomes a little a little weird for me. Mm -hmm. But getting the scabbards though, in general, I like like I think that would work. Like Yamato leaving them is the hard part. You know what I mean? But like, at least Ulti and Page One, I feel like, because they're like, they were like orphans and stuff. It's like, I don't know. They might kind of need somewhere. I think like Oda had to have left Yamato behind because Yamato has to fight someone strong and be like a force that no one else can be. Okay, so here's another good parallel. So Blackbeard might be pulling up, right? Like, or some part of his crew. Well, who pulled up to get Odin out of Wano? Whitebeard, who parallels Blackbeard in a million different ways, right? Like, at least on his crew and, you know, all that has his power, all that stuff. So what if Blackbeard pulls up to get Pluton and Yamato doesn't even know that Blackbeard's a bad guy? And, like, that's Ooh. Luffy's main enemy. And so Yamato's like, okay, well, like, for one reason or another, maybe, you know, Yamato assumes Blackbeard's just, you know, some other pirate kind of guy like Luffy. And he's like, oh, well, I'm going to get out of here with you and we can go. Yeah, that's, uh... Cook. That's a that's a cook right there. I like that. It Yeah. Cuz like would Momo wouldn't know either, right? The Blackbeard's like Luffy's more like like they're closed off. They don't know a whole lot about the world in general. Their most recent experience with a pirate is like save, you know, getting saved unless Yamato knows Blackbeard's connection to Ace's death. Ooh. That would be, that would be amazing. Because then it becomes personal, and and then you have a reason for like having this character in the story, having the the relationship with Ace in the first place. Um, then, ooh, Ice as a parallel to Ace's fire. Oh, so a Yamato versus Blackbeard becomes the post time skip ace loses to blackbeard becomes another prisoner of of blackbeard potentially then that's how we get yamato into the story later on and then yamato can even maybe be a part of the blackbeard and straw hat battles at that point too because like there's been a debate on it because it's like yamato would have to be part of the crew or whatever but if yamato's at the epicenter of the debate you know what i mean like the whole conflict yeah i that's we, I mean, we've already established Blackbeard is the type of person that wants to capture people. So it's like Yamato would go from being free to being a prisoner again, having to be freed once more. But then 
this time they'll actually be free when you know right. when, when they get freed this time uh i i could see that that's that's a if we go down that rabbit hole then i would really appreciate that character more than i do yeah that's where i'm at like yamato needs some like to me it's like some connection to the greater world that's like outside of wano like obviously like ace is somewhat of that but like like i want yamato to have a conflict with like another pirate and you know like be like no i'm like luffy's the the one i i'm with you know what i'm saying like i support luffy like i want to see some out, outer world conflict of some kind with yamato because it's like Yamato is entirely Wano and Straw Hat centric. You know what I mean? Like Yamato just introduced in the raid. Like we didn't even know Yamato's gonna be around. So I want some other stuff with Yamato. You know? Yeah, I, I want Oda to get creative because you know, for Yamato to be, I've said it before, and I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole. But I mean, like for uh, them to be introduced right at the start of Act Three with no prior like foreshadowing at all, just always makes me feel like it was a last minute addition. Agreed. So it's like when we start creating these scenarios that then make it more meaningful based on everything that we have before in hindsight, then it's like, okay, now we've we've found the reason for this character. Um, Love that. Very motivated, supered, and said, uh, the people are dying to know. <laughs> it's me, I'm people. Um, how is Reassembled Joy Boy holding up a whole year later? What do you think, Dak? Uh, I mean, I think I think pretty good. I mean, I don't think there's been a whole lot to, you know, like counter it. You know what I'm saying? Like anything in the opposite side. Um, but I would say there's been some anecdotal other stuff that maybe doesn't really support it, but maybe the pieces are still aligning. Like for me, something I've been talking about a ton is Blackbeard is going to get a hold of some Seraphim somehow because we, we've talked about this. We're like, I think the Seraphim are just... They were made for Oda's excuse to give Blackbeard devil fruits that he needs without killing the people that have the fruits, so he you know can break the whole system. You know what I mean? Just like oh, I want to keep these characters alive, but Blackbeard can still get the powers he needs. Well, you know, we, I think since that last the last time we talked, you know, we saw at least S Gecko or S Bat or whatever. So he's probably going to have those powers just with the Which fact we know he exists. Didn't exist when we you mm -hmm. know, were cooking that all together. And we know Blackbeard, like at least. So we've seen part of his crew at Egghead, but people are still wondering where Lafitte's at. Like, could Lafitte still be at Egghead somewhere? Which is what I actually think is going on. Because, like, well, I, we now finally saw York, but what I was saying the whole time is like, why is York all by herself? Like, is Lafitte going to go up there and be like, hey, order the Seraphim to leave with me and you can come with us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but they don't even need York now. Because, exactly. Because uh, Devon has the highest authority in the world. Exactly. So it's outside of potentially S... Um, uh, so they're saying that Dax still is reverb. It, it's I can see it on the um, I can see the levels. So it's like when I speak, I'm not really getting picked up by Dax Mike, but when Dax speaks, yeah. he's getting picked up on on mine. So I'm just gonna talk more of this direction, and it should work. So there's <laughs> less. I still see the bar. Okay, I guess uh, yeah. I think we're all right if it goes like this, but um. But, but about that is also the Seraphim are still in the basement, right? Like, they're in the basement in bubbles. So it's like, somebody's got to get in there and free them. Uh, yeah. And it's like, now the other thing with that is... Uh, they can control the Seraphim by changing it to Saturn. Do they... The, oh, this is the problem with Oda not showing us everything. It's just like, did they leave with Caribou? Or did they go to where the Seraphim are? What do they really want? Because my whole thing was, okay, they're going to Egghead because specifically they want the Devil Fruits. They mm -hmm. want, especially as Snake, they want the Mero yes. Mero no Mi. So... Ah... Uh, it's... It's kind of up in the air what Blackbeard's plan is now, but it involves Marajoa at at the very least. 100%. He wants to become a recognized state. He wants Hachinosu to uh, be recognized so that he gets the access to walk around the Holy Land. And while he's walking around the Holy Land, just like Impel Down pre-time skip, that's when Devon can switch into Saturn and then go into the 
depths and get what he was really after. I love so that. Well, here's an important question for you: Is so, you know, we don't really know how the Gorosei's powers work yet, right? And Devin touched the quote-unquote zone form, the demon form, whatever, right? Whatever it is. Does Devin only have that form, or does do you think Devin has all the forms? You know what I'm saying? Like, does Devin get granted the human form of Saturn also? Now, that brings up the better qu- uh, the better question of, is it a devil fruit? What is the real form? Mm-hmm. Because in theory, I, I think that they are the yokai. So in, in in that case, Saturn's true form is that. Um, and But if they're humans with devil fruits, then it would be a situation where Devon would only get the human... Like, Devon is not going to be able to replicate powers. That's going to be way too broken. Yeah. So it's... I, I think that the difference between the way that Devon will use the ability and how like Mr. Two uses the similar ability is that Devon may be able to temporarily change other people on the Blackbeard Pirates into some, someone else. Savage. Savage. So it's like, you know, just standard awakening rules. Luffy punches somebody, they turn to rubber. Mm-hmm. If my power is to change into someone, if I touch somebody else, I should be able to change them. Um... So right. it could be a thing where Devon isn't the one that turns into Saturn. It's actually like Augur. And then we just or see teach. like, yeah. And then it's like, but I mean, Augur, you know, like would be able to warp around and go where mm-hmm. they, you know, where they need to go or something. But, um, or if it's a thing where if I change you into something and you use your ability, like you're going to turn back into your, you know, your normal self. There okay. has to, there has to be some sort of like flaw. Like, there has to be a drawback to it. One thing that I've heard, I can't remember who said it, but I remember they said it in my stream, and I love the idea where, what if Devin can only use, like, nine different forms at a time because of the tails? Oh, that's interesting. Like, like you load them, you know, you have to, like, swap them out. You have to forget. So it's like you don't have the memory ability that, like, Mr. Two has, but whatever nine forms you have, you're... See, like, if that was the case, then I'd be like, okay, then they get their powers. Because you, you, you then, it, then Devon would be able to switch between nine different people and access nine different things. That's cool. Um, yeah. What I think could also happen is like, they get to, Mer- <laughs> to, you know, to the Holy Land, and Devon is like, okay, I'm going to change into Saturn now. And then when she changes into Saturn, it's the spider form. And it's like, wait, what's happening? Yes. And, doesn't realize that, you know, Devin turns into like the true form of people. So it, and I think that also ties to Bonnie. Remember how Bonnie tried to use her powers on Saturn and it wouldn't work. Is that just hockey nullification? You know, like we've seen with like law, how he couldn't shamble, uh, like law or Kaido and big mom, or is that like, are they like not real? Do they not age at all? Like, or, or is it that powers don't work on him? Cause he's not real. So maybe Devin, like something I, like I don't think this is the case, but something I think would be really cool is if Devin goes and tries to transform into Saturn and it just doesn't work because like he's like barely real, you know what I mean? Or she turns into like something that isn't like what he looked like, but it's like a maybe she like turns into the circle on the ground or something because it's like what is you know like what is this you know because yeah. it's because I think they're because I you said like you think they're yokai like I think that because we saw the circle in the room of authority, so we know like their human bodies are gone, right? So now the question is, okay, are, is that just like a teleporter and they're transforming? Or is there like another mechanism involved here? Like, are they no longer themselves at all? And they just completely swapped into a different being. And that I think that's definitely it. Like there's, I, I'm, I, my guess is that the humans go to the underworld, like the human bodies go to the underworld and in exchange, the devils get to come out. Like, cause devil fruit powers, you know, it's usually a devil and a human in the same body. So it's like, you can you like, so maybe for them, they can only have one out at a time, like the devil or the human, because they're connected. You know what I mean? Like, because devil fruits usually merge it. Then you have to, like, make the will your own or whatever. Like, if you're a zone, you have to, like, match it or else you lose control. And it's like, what if they're just literally, they exchange themselves for the real thing to come out? Or, like, you know, I don't know. 
I don't know, but I would love if it, it, it was a thing where they were going to like, like the plan hinges on convincing one person that Devon is Saturn, and then when she switches, it's the yokai form, and then it like just fumbles the whole plan because it instead that scares the person. Yeah, I, I like that. Like, I think the most anticlimactic thing is if Devon just got to turn into the human Saturn, and it was like that simple. Like, which it would still work. It'd be cool. Like, not anticlimactic. Like, that would go somewhere, but. I would like to see like a twist to it, you know, where Devin didn't understand the situation. Yeah. Uh, Zach Bruno superintendent said a uh, little late uh, thoughts on Yamato ending up on Blackbeard's ship somehow, then joining Luffy to parallel Odin on Whitebeard's crew before Rogers. Uh, we actually talked about that for about 15 minutes. Yeah. That exact thing. And, and you're, you're cooking, cooking though. You're cooking, yeah. <laughs> we'll say that you're definitely cooking. Um, so I would I would just run back a little bit because um, it, 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 we went into a bunch of different scenarios on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam Fisher, super appreciate it. Said uh, we know the theory that the Logia awakening permanently changes the environment to the Logia type theory. Alabasta was turned into a desert by the Sand Sandford awakening during the Void Century. Uh, I mean I love that. That's that's cool to me. I, I don't know if you saw my last short or was my last one. A couple shorts ago, I brought that up. I don't know if you saw that or not, but I am, I'm 100% on board with that. Uh, and I guess I'm probably going to do a short on this eventually too. But uh, FYI, I also think that, that if that did happen, then I think Alabasta was definitely the Emerald City at one point because it had plants everywhere. Like it was like a luscious forest. And then Croc, someone with the sand fruit came in, dried it out, which is a parallel of what Croc did. He just didn't use his powers to do it. He did the dance powder stuff. So what if a guy in the past could do it even more thoroughly and he turned all of the luscious green alabasta into a desert and that's why it looks that way now. I love that because right after alabasta is when, you know, Bellamy just casually drops the Emerald City. So it's like it's, a, it's immediately right after it. Um, I love that. It would just be really like we we're in the Void Century flashback and it's like just it says the Oda box says Alabasta, but it's like a forest. Yep. I would, <laughs> or or maybe he calls it Emerald City, but we can tell it looks like Alabasta because like Alabarna is like above, or like there's some structures that look because like there's some ruins that are just like thousands of years old there. Um, and although there's one other thing I was gonna say about it, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm 100 percent on that. I think. Oh, uh, maybe the reason that that happened was i mean it could be someone just trying to take over alabasta like croc did it could be that easy like trying to dry it out and make the political you know like some political unease there but i wonder if it was more of like a somewhat of a punishment for lily not staying in marijuana and what if like they dried it out as a way to try to get the nefertaris out of power without just taking them out because that's kind of what croc did right dried it out try to make some instability start a civil war take it over what if they did this like we don't want lily there so we want our own plant. in that in that event i would want crocodile to have some secret lineage then that ties him to whoever did that i i, I think croc is rock's kid i think we talked about this so i'm big on that i would love that I'm, that's one of my favorite agendas i mean ugh, it 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 works he's old enough to have to have, have been there i mean like i you know, I was pushing rock, uh, a crocodile being, um, yeah, croc, um, yep, uh, crocodile. Yeah, I was pushing him being involved in God Valley. You know, and uh, could could have been like, I mean, even if he was a slave or something, like because he would have been eight years old. And every like major flashback we've had is always when someone's eight. For Robin, the most part. who and Robin and Croc work together in Alabasta. Yep. They made their they both been Nami, on the run their whole lives. Luffy, uh Sanji. Like it's all like Oda loves telling flashbacks when someone's eight. So it's like what happened when Crocodile was eight? God Valley. Um gotta be a connection. But uh let's see, Les super uh chatted and said Blackbeard is approached by a weakened Kaido, and with Kaido now recognizing Luffy's joy boy puts up a last stand as finished by Blackbeard and gets his fruit. Uh, that's interesting. Um, I mean, I'm I'm over the dragon stuff, but I mean, okay, if Oda wants to do it, he's gonna do it. 
Yeah, and so I'm I'm I totally agree with that. But like it, now, it could be that Kaido was already dead, and Blackbeard just finds the fruit. It could be either or, right? Because Blackbeard's a devil fruit hunter. You know what I mean? But remember, at God Valley, what was like seemingly the most important fruit that they were going for was Kaido's, and we know Blackbeard ties to rock so closely. And and we don't know this for sure, but I'm I think it's pretty certain that the treasure from Hachinosu that was taken were just the fruits. Because, like, they're all coming back. I'm going to get it. No, I'm going to get it. And the first thing they go for is the fruit. It's like, okay, that's probably what the whole thing was about. And so it's like, did, did why did Rox have that fruit to begin with? Why does he want it now? You know, at God Valley. It's like, well, Blackbeard might be thinking that now, now would Blackbeard eat it? I don't think so. Now, the one benefit to that is it's a fish fish fruit. So if he ate it, he could breathe in the water if he fell in the water with his devil fruits. He wouldn't die right away. Right? He couldn't drown. Yep. So that would be the biggest benefit. Like, I wouldn't want to see him transform. I would just want him to breathe in the water, which like wouldn't happen. So maybe he can find another way. But I think I think something that's even cooler is if he used the dragon fruit on the saber of Zebek, and like because like, we haven't seen the saber of Zebek yet. And so like, what if it's broken and he has to fix it by giving it a fruit, and then it can travel? I you know people have said oh maybe the sunny gets the uh, uh, paw paw fruit. I don't want any um, chips to get devil fruits because I, I just, I don't want to get into the mechanics of like, this really should sink. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the interesting thing about all of this stuff with Blackbeard going to Wano also is like when Shanks pulled up, he was so sure that Blackbeard would be there. That's why he even went. Mm -hmm. It was just like, Oh, I was expecting to see teach here. Um, so it's like, if Blackbeard does show up, does Shanks come again or is Shanks dealing with something else and, you know, misses that opportunity and then that brings up like one of my new agendas which is the dark magic that we are seeing now mm -hmm. isn't just something that the gorase can do so these circles on the ground when we actually like now in the final saga start seeing the top tiers go all out i think we're going to start seeing different versions of this even if they're colored differently like if it's not black you know maybe there's a, a white you know yin and yang mm -hmm. type of thing but i'm fully expecting shanks to pop out of a circle at one point and then that shows like how he is able to travel so fast around the world okay so, so you do think they're just like teleporters essentially like the circles uh i think yeah I, th I think that there's i think it's all part of like an ancient magic okay um, and I think it ties back to 3D2Y when we saw Brooke um, show up in the summoning circle from that cult. Yeah. They're all wearing black cloaks. And if you go back to chapter 908 or whatever, and you see Shanks meeting for the Gorose, mm -hmm. he looks just like those guys at that cult. So it's That's like, a good connection. So it's like, is there is there a tie here? Like, is this like an ancient religion or something from back then mm -hmm. um that the gorse you know are the deities of or you know they co-opted wh whatever but it's like shanks had to put that cloak on not because he was trying to um hide himself while walking around the holy land but because it's a sign of reverence for the gorse interesting i like that Okay, cause see, so here's the thing about the teleporter. Well, it's like I, they definitely teleport in some way, but I guess the question is whether they teleport you just like from one point in this world to another point in this world. You know what I mean? Like, could you go from just anywhere on the One Piece world to like Marie Joie if you want? You know, like that's one way of teleporting. Or what if it's a it's gonna sound kind of crazy, but like interdimensional teleporter? So you think about Blue no Blue Nose uh, Door Door Fruit, right? So you go to the door dimension. What if the underworld is just that same kind of thing, but it's another dimension? So like those are ways to access the underworld. You know what I'm saying? Like that's so you could theoretically just maybe Shanks is just like teleport there and then pick where to make the wormhole end up at. And he, you know what I mean? So it's like maybe he technically because we know it's a place because Brooke's been there, right? We know you can go there. And how do you come back? You need a devil fruit. And we know that those, you know, obviously like it's in the name devils. And so going back to the underworld stuff, it's like. And he was obviously tied to the circle. So it's like there is there is a way to get there and get back. And if you can do it with a devil fruit, someone had to make that. Like, basically, I think the devil fruits have to tie to the circles. It's like there's no other way. Because, like, 
the devil fruits have to tie to actual devil. They don't have to, but they should tie to something like that. If Brooke's able to eat one and come back from the underworld, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, the underworld is involved in the original creation somehow. I think, I think what we're dealing with here is, you know, we, we, we've brought math piece to the, the lexicon, but now it's, now it's all about magic piece. And it's just, I think that magic has been a, like a, a part of this story this entire time. And that hockey is just some like, you know, it's, it's magic by a different name. Mm -hmm. Um, and the devil fruits are magic. What Luffy is doing with imagination is magic. And, you know, he's it's all some sort of sorcery that he's tapping into that he's not even necessarily aware of what he's actually doing. But, um, you know, I was talking about this with Parvision on the last Theory for Theory, I think. But um, what I, I think in order for Luffy to bypass what the Gorsei has, which is probably like the advanced form of just all forms of hockey or like, you know, advanced conquerors hockey or something. And it's like the way to, to, to break that is actually belief. And it's, you know, this ties back to Bonnie being told by mm -hmm. um, Saturn, like, Oh, you're weak now because you're, you stopped believing in, in, in yourself. Mm -hmm. And the reason why there's a void century and everything is actually the suppression of uh, Nika suppression of the name. The name uh, gives power. The name gives mm -hmm. belief. Um, so the more people that know that Nika exists, the stronger Luffy could become because there's like, you know, the, the, the only comparison I can make is, is spirit bomb energy. Yeah. You know, so it's like when the world starts believing in Luffy again, he will get some sort of like weird, wacky, like ethereal power beyond what he has. And that'll be what is able to like actually break through whatever barrier the Gorosei has. Interesting. See, because I think I've, I've heard some kind of mix of that before. And I definitely see where it's coming from. Cause like you said, with Bonnie, that's like the biggest piece of evidence for me. You know, it's like he's. Like he's t at least it's specific to Bonnie, I guess, in that context where it's like the more you believe because of her powers, you know, like you get stronger. And I think you can easily take that to like a bigger parallel, like the world could do the same kind of thing. But for me, I don't think Luffy would get a power up from it because he doesn't care about Nika and like he doesn't want to be a hero. Like, does he want does he like it when people, you know, root for him and like his friends are rooting him on? Like, I'm, I'm, Yes. But like, I don't think he really even wants the world to look at him that way. I think it's it's something uh, inherent and it's not something that Luffy can choose whether he wants it or not. You know, it's like the uh, the Sun's Cup things. Like these guys were going to mm -hmm. follow him whether, whether he wanted it or not. But it's like one of the biggest pieces of evidence to me is Luffy was losing to Luchi. And then yeah. the moment Usopp starts like cheering him on, that's when this like burst of energy came in. And this seems, you know, like super anime and like mm -hmm. everything. And it's just like, Oh, you know, like they're, 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 they're buddies cheering them on. And now like they're getting mm -hmm. power, but like actually making that like something tangible in the world mm -hmm. would be something that I don't, th I have, I, I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is, this is the power it's belief versus fear. So the people, uh, fear the government, and the Gorosei like draw on that and they're able to kind of like live in that. But if they believed in, you know, this force that could stop it, then, you know, it's, it, there's a, there's a way in story to not make it seem corny. And, you know, I think that when anime, you know, and manga and anything like does something like this, it can come off as corny, mm -hmm. but I, I trust Oda enough to like, he's already trying to be the, um, the prototype for everything. So he's pulling from every single imaginable thing possible. Yep. So it's like, why not make the most definitive version of that trope in the first place? 
for me, I think it's that like I think when you believe in Nika, the you like the world gets stronger because like they have hope or they know there's an actual way out, right? And so tying it back to like the government with the fear, like I hope it's not that Luffy specifically gets the powers, but rather just like the world just by virtue of knowing that there's this Savage. good person out there that's super strong and all that, they're gonna fight more, kind of like with Bello Betty's powers, how she can like get people amped up. And Brooke can also do it with like his music, like we saw in 3D2I, where like they're like, Oh, your music motivated me to start fighting. Um, I like, but for Luffy, like you said, with with Eni's lobby, the thing there is like that's his one of his best friends, you know, like and also like there's like a lot of emotional ties to it because Usopp like was gone from the crew at that point. So it's like that was the first time he saw him in a long time, you know? So like things like that, I think should motivate Luffy because like his friend like that's always been his thing, is like protect my friends, right? So that's why I think if the whole world is doing it, like I like I would hope that Luffy's just like, like, yes, I don't care, but also that because he's Nika and like he has like the will of Nika or whatever, Nika also wouldn't have cared or wanted that even. It's like I'm 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 the god by being me. You know what I'm saying? So like And that's that's where Luffy will like change the conversation on that. But even if you go back and you you like watch the Gear 5 episode, it's like Luffy doesn't come back to life until Nami like yells at Kaido that he's not dead. So it's like it 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 just it all feels really Peter Pan to me. And it's just uh, there there's, it's just Oda drawing from multiple multiple things again. If there's ever a spirit bomb moment, what I would rather it be is that the crew somehow is willingly giving up their shadows to Luffy to bring back Nightmare Luffy. But it wouldn't just be a regular one. Remember how Luffy got the power ups from the shadows like he could use a sword? Yeah. yeah. Well, what if he gets Zoro's shadow and he's, oh, I'm the world's strongest swordsman now. He gets Nami's. It's like, oh, I can control weather. So like we have the ultimate Luffy and it comes together because of his friends. Like he helped his friends achieve his dream, their dreams. So they all, you know, became goaded and then. See, I love that, but what I what I actually want is the inversion of that, where Luffy finds out a way to kind of give uh, almost Gear 5 power-ups to the crew. So, uh, like, I, and this goes to my, you know, Tamate box theory, which we've talked about, mm-hmm. where it's like, obviously there were these pills created that were, in my mind, trying to replicate the Gear 5 formation. You get white hair, you get red eyes... Uh, you know, you you get this boost of power. Was this a way of replicating something that Nika was able to do? Mm-hmm. To like give people this, the, you know, this, this power boost. Yeah, like that's something that um, I think would be really interesting. And even Su Long could and, maybe and, and Su Long, yeah, and that might be like a better like, version. The like the Minx may be a race that was able to actually like pass it down through lineage. And agreed. That's why maybe they had to isolate themselves because they were trying to be eliminated by the government because they could still draw upon this power that they wanted to exactly you know, keep from the world. Exactly. Um, uh, if you want to, if you want to get caught up on supers, I know I keep continuing. If you want to get <laughs> caught up, go go for it. Uh, yeah, I want to catch up for uh, uh, for a second here. Uh, Lubu Kilyu said, "Adam Tree created by an ability relative to the awakening of more and more no me." Imagine bird cage, but a giant tree is the result. Uh, no di- no idea if I'm originating this. Um, what is the Mori Mori no Mi? Because which which one? I, is I, it? I I can't remember which the Mori Mori no Mi is. I I know because the um, Do Flamingos is the Ito Ito. Uh, mm-hmm. Is Mori Mori Green Bull? Are we saying maybe that like that's, that like that context would say that's it? I'm gonna check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's, it maybe turns the user into a forest human. Yeah, it's yeah. rainbows. Um, maybe. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, especially if we're trying to create, like, you know, an Yggdrasil type thing, I could see, like, um, Green Bull's ability, like, sprouting out and then, you know, creating this massive tree. Um, you know, sense. but that also, you know, kind of ties into the Osiris story and everything with Joy Boy was that Joy Boy... Uh, sorry, that Osiris, uh, you know, kind of became a tree. Um, so if Joy Boy became a tree, I think that that would be more uh, in line with things, even though that, you know, steps on specifics of the reassembled Joy Boy theory. But I mean, if it's mm-hmm. like 
but it's more in line with the like literal well, Osiris story. Well, wait, 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 wait. So the Poneglyphs are like indestructible, and Adam Adam Wood is like the hardest wood in existence. Could there be a connection right there? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what if Joy Boy was turned into a tree, <laughs> but then also turned into stone? I don't know how that would work, but the fact that they're both extremely hard substances is actually that's interesting. So it's like uh, if you know, it's not that we need to reassemble Joy Boy, but that every that he turned into a tree. You know, devil fruits may come from it or whatever, but also when they sliced. You know, depending on how they slice the tree, they could make the poneglyphs from it. Well, um, well, actually, we don't have to get on this whole whole tangent because it'll this this could take a while. But I actually think yeah, that's what we're here for. I, yeah. I actually think the Eve tree was carved out of the Adam tree, like it was once part of the Adam tree, and so uh, you're going into the yeah you know, the rib. And yep, so the rib, but also that would if you took a cylindrical chunk out of the edge of a big cylindrical tree the shape left behind would be a crescent moon. So we have the sunlight tree Eve. And then if Adam looks like a moon now, cause like you have like the big cylindrical chunk. So it's like a crescent then. When Big Mom and Wano did the Coco Sovereignty, I may be misremembering, but didn't she like hit a tree and like literally like do what you're saying? I think you're right actually. I feel like that. I feel like that happened. I actually think you're right. Um, when well, one other thing I just wanted to say before I forget, uh, Lubu kill you. I haven't seen you in a minute. I'm glad. I'm glad. I hope you're doing well, man. It's been a minute. Uh, but I think you're definitely right that his awakening was used on one tree, but I'm, I think the whale tree is the most likely. Okay. Like a whale was turned into a tree. Cause we, th we think one piece might be inside of a whale. You know, Laboon had an Island in there. What if that whale was turned into a tree? Like in it, cause it had the Roponoglyph inside cause it was like protecting it. And they just put it on Zoe as like, you know, I don't know how that would all work, but. Okay. Um, Mr. Bushido, my theory is Yamato does defend Wano and dies. Momo is saved, but he leaves to rejoin the crew uh, to find out what his father found and become a better Shogun. Um, I love all of that. If that happens, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Momo meeting up with the crew is going to happen at some point. You know, to learn more information or to share information or to learn more. But like him leaving is the whole problem because then it's like undefended, you know, like yeah. unless, unless you get the Toby Ropo scabbards. But even then, well, if it becomes a situation like VV with Alabasta, where it's like there's no real home to go to, like to, yeah. like if it gets that bad, you mm -hmm. know, but uh, Sam Fisher said, I like the idea of Stussy becoming a, uh, a straw hat. Having a rocks clone on the crew would be a massive uh, boost for the Straw Hats. Um, interesting. I've never heard anybody like mention that before. Um, I think her power is too broken, though. I think it's like I think it would be another situation like Robin and Oda already has a problem with trying to figure out how to make Robin fight without just instantly beating people. And here you would have Stussy that all she has to do is like bite you and then you pass out. So it's not a really, it's not a power that like, um, is fun to carry along with us because you just, there, there's no, every, everybody would just get one shot at, I think. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. I think, I do think Stussy's going to have an interesting future though, because obviously she, so you've talked about this a lot actually with, uh. Guernica saying I envy you to Drake right so it's like can CP0 not act out or at least that's like kind of what the implication was we don't really know and then what does Stussy do betrays CP0 so now what what is the ramifications for betraying CP0 like that's got to be insane so that's where I hope Stussy's story goes is like she gets reprimanded and we see what the kind of punishment is or what happens to CP0 agents that defect you know because we need to figure that out yeah my, my thoughts on Cypher Pull Zero is that they're they're the suicide squad from DC comics. So it's like, these are people that were technically arrested or knew too much, but uh, they technically arrested, but they knew too much that they couldn't be put in prison and, you know, fear that they would actually like give up their secrets. So they were offered almost freedom where they would have to go and 
carry out tasks like the Suicide Squad. But it's like, if you don't finish your task, we're just gonna kill you. So it's like, if you wanna live, you can now be in this secret organization and like protect the Celestial Dragons and essentially be slaves. Um, but because it's like, how do you go from the cover story of CP9 to all of those characters being a part of CP0 other than just, um, okay, they're in another organization now? Because that cover story ended with them like going up against the world government. So yep. it's like, in my mind, they got captured and then they were given a choice. And that choice was that, they, you know, they didn't get bombs put in their necks, like, you mm -hmm. know, like the Suicide Squad, but it's just, you know, don't mess up. And, uh, and you know, next time we saw Luchi and Kaku after that, they awakened. They had successfully awakened zones. And guess what? Their ribbon thing looks the exact same as the Gorose. Is that and we know that Luffy, you know, I think I think his fruit may not be his own, but that's a whole other discussion. But he has a, a white ribbon thing and, you know, these other like and he's supposed to have a zone. But why do these other guys have a black one if they're all just zones? Like, what's the difference? Maybe it's the black magic stuff. And they were like given that awakening by Emu or the Gorosei because like they're like, OK, we'll let you control this by you because you're obeying or whatever. Um, yeah, I like that. I definitely have some thoughts on that. Um, I'm going to. Give you the chat for a minute, and I'll be right back. Oh, no problem. <clears throat> What's going on, chat? It's just me now taking over the stream. Um, I'll leave the super so you get back, but let's see here. Kev, I like what you're saying about um, like if that tree's on Elbaf, Shanks is terrific connecting more to the moon. I like that a lot. That is true because there's there's got to be a reason that like if Oda's gonna make. Shanks tied to one place like he's tied I guess you could say he's tied to a couple like you know we met him in Fusha Village I guess but if that's like his main turf and you know because he has other ones but that's where we you know saw him waiting and like he's all friends with the Giants that's got to go somewhere important right like it, it almost has to um so man so I, I like that Shank, the reason Shanks is there has to be more than just like I like the Giants you know what I mean like the Sun God religion part of it has to be relevant so I like that um, let's see here. Uh, three day you're cooking with the sun tree, even moon tree, Adam, you, you, you know, you, you know all about that agenda. We're, we're on the same page. Um, Lucy B you said, what do, what do I think the message will contain? Uh, definitely at least the name of the ancient kingdom. I think the parallels to Clover are way too strong to not do that. Um, it's like, and also, you know, it's been such an Ohara centric arc and we've even gotten like, we know Saul's alive now. We've gotten like the whole kind of uh, like got multiple flashbacks to it or like reminder panels of how that whole thing went down. And so to me, and also seeing Clover was like actually like a pirate back then and was, you know, he had like the sword on the front of the, the bow there. I think that kind of stuff is like, you know, we're obviously building up to hyping up Ohara and Clover again. That's like what Oda, Oda's like hammering that home. And so since the name of the ancient kingdom was the point of that, I think that's got to be it. But now is he going to tack on some extra stuff? That's very possible. Like we're not going to get the whole void century flashback, but um, at least the name. And I wouldn't be surprised too, if he just gave like a very brief, like, because remember how earlier in the arc uh, Shaka talked about how, like he basically gave a summary of the ancient kingdom where Shaka was like, or the ancient kingdom of the void centuries. Like there was a giant war between the, this ancient kingdom and the government and the government won, which like is super basic, but I would, I could even see that where Vegapunk's like, there was a, there was an, a high tech ancient kingdom back in the day that lost to the government after a 100 year war. And afterward, these people are who took over and he shows like images of maybe even Emu in the Gorosei, maybe just the Gorosei. And then says the name like I think that's the, the like the bare the name is the bare minimum. I would think the war aspect is included. But uh, Randy, what, what do you got on the docket for Vegapunk's message? What do you think? Um, I'm hoping that it is the. Story of Nika, that was a, you know, a comment that came in and I was like that that lines up with my, you know, current agenda about getting the word out about Nika. Like that I feel is like the most dangerous thing to the, uh, to the government now. And it ties into the Kuma flashback. It ties into what, you know, Kuma was after. And 
Because I, I, I think if... I get... I see the appeal and I see the... Um, you know, cyclical nature of having... Uh, Clover start something, old man, mm -hmm. and then Vegapunk finishing it, old man. But it's like it neuters Robin in the story. I want Robin to say the name, though. I want Robin to say the name. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, and I've said that countless times. It's like, if if we're going to get anything about the ancient kingdom, or like, if it's a thing where the broadcast gets cut off right as like Vegapunk is about to say it, like, I need Robin to, you know, just like, pick up the pick it up so, from where it left off and just say love that the name is blah blah bingo blah. bongo yeah and like show why she is the like the inheritor of that will if if robin doesn't say the name of the ancient kingdom or tell us like really lore dump on the void history then i'm going to assume that uh robin being on the crew was um never planned and oda has been winging it ever since she joined the crew and i love that you're on that agenda because something i i think i might have even said this when we first learned the message was happening was like okay so the message started because vegapunk died if he were to get saved the message might stop playing so it could be even a reverse thing where it's not that the message stops because someone died but because someone survived you know what I mean? So that would be ironic. Or the Gorsei could just stop it. There's a lot of ways to stop it, I guess. But then the, the thing is, is Robin's powers. How did Robin even learn how to read the Poneglyphs? Remember, she was like sticking her eye in the, in the room and like in like your ear and like listening and watching what they were doing. And she learned without even she wasn't supposed to. So now think about this, this control room thing. Well, what if Robin just sends her, you know, the head or mouth or whatever just like yells it into the mic after the the thing cuts off and she finishes it because she has the powers to do that that's, that's how she learned it was popping her her head in there essentially i want that i want that um it, it's it, i want robin to just show why she is so wanted by the government, why she is so dangerous. Love you know, that. It's not that she is an assassin. It is not that you know she's a straw hat. It's that she can read the Poneglyphs. She knows things about the ancient weapons, about the Void Century, about maybe even Nika. Who knows? But it's like these elements need to need to come out and I want them to come from her. I don't want them to come from anybody else because the whole story for a quarter century has been telling us that Robin is the only person that knows this information. Don't come in the final saga and then suddenly say, oh, this guy that, you know, I introduced in 2006 or whatever is going to actually be the guy that's going to tell you all of this information. And I don't mind if he lore dumps. But have it be about something that Robin isn't going to tell us or should tell us. There you go. Yeah, I, I like that a lot because, um, like, like, like you saying, you know, Robin, her, like, sh her, her point is to reveal information like this, especially the ancient kingdom name, because Clover is her, is her Shanks almost. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like, like, kind of the connection there. So it's like if anyone's gonna say that, it's gotta be her. And I think I think the stuff you're saying with like Vegapunk talking about Nika instead, I like that a lot too. Actually, like I could see him talking about Nika, and then right before he reveals the Ancient Kingdom name, it gets cut off. So you get the best of both worlds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What What I think is most um, important for Vegapunk to to get out here is um, whatever he does needs to galvanize the Revolutionary Army. And their troops so it's like we've already seen like a couple of instances uh you know with like the flame emperor chapter where there are islands that have a bunch of people like standing up against uh you know the oppressive regime now they're they're tied with they're tired of the heavenly tribunes and, and bello betty yeah exactly these guys they just stormed the holy land like they're they're ready what they need is someone to publicly like just give them the okay that everything that they've been thinking and believing for years is true. So all he needs to explain is like, he doesn't have to go into all of the details, but as long as he gives them enough to galvanize in a way that Dragon is able to like gather all of these people from all of these countries to create the, 
you know, this civil war that needs to happen between the, you know, the government and the people. I love that. Then that'll, that'll work. And then it's just, I want to see like a tag team between Robin and, and Vivi, like, you know, pushing the, you know, uh, the agenda further where it's like Robin tells the actual truth of everything that happens once they were, all of the pieces are put together. And then like Vivi co-signs it by, you know, letting the people know that it's, you know, trustworthy information and that she also has something to kind of atone for because her ancestor may have been involved in the process of, of what everything happened to people. And she's got to wear that in a tone. You're cooking. Uh, that I never even thought about the VV layer because, like, that's something I've talked about in different contexts. But the way you just put it was perfect because VV is like a a pretty popular person globally speaking. Like, I don't know how else to put it because, like, you know, while we haven't seen a ton of that information, but it's, you know, you go back to Brooke and he's like, I've never heard of anyone speak poorly of Alabasta or like the leaders of Alabasta before. You know, like they're 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 regarded highly in general. So if VV comes out and says that, maybe VV VV, VV even says like. You know, my ancestor was, is one of those leaders. I know the truth for sure because my family was a part of it. And that, that would be like, the, like you said, the cosign. That'd be like the, oh, okay, th this isn't a joke, right? Yeah, it's like, I would love a scenario where it's, you know, and I mean, like, this isn't necessarily like egghead territory, but if we're, um, uh, if we have a scenario where we can hack back into these snails across the globe and everything, and this is Robin's time to shine, right? Mm -hmm. And then every, we like, start doing decks of the world and we start seeing other people and are like, ah, but she's a wanted criminal. We can't trust this. Like we believed Vegapunk because like he's a renowned scientist. And then Vivi walks in and then they're just like, whoa, that's Princess Vivi. And it's like, and she's just like, listen to what she's saying. She's and cooking. And this is my, this is, you know, the, <laughs> not, not only am I co-signing this information, like I'm, like, I'm partly responsible and I need to apologize for it. Like, Vivi is the is is like the the Princess Diana of this world. Like it's like it's something that is just so. She is as far as like royalty goes. When they're like even at the Reverie, people were like, "That's Princess Vivi." Yeah, you know. So it's and and even like Steli, like this is this is like a random thing, but like even Steli when he saw because he's I think there's a lot of cool parallels you can make with him, you know, because he like wanted to sit on the throne and all that stuff. When Steli saw Vivi's poster because they're looking for her, he's like. You know, his wife's right behind him and he's like, the eyes are pop, like hard eyes are popping out. He's like freaking out. It's like, you know, like it just like making that connection to like Emu who now is trying to retrieve Vivi in some way, you know, like some crazy stuff. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, the top agenda is just Oda finally letting the people see how important that character actually is to the story. Um, so I know that's your goat. It, it is because I see the potential of the character. It's unrealized, but I see the potential of the character. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the thing, and I feel like the the ever, the pieces are coming into play for those promises to like get fulfilled. Um, now, uh, now the something that I I was actually to like get ready for this collab, I was listening to some of um, the first collab that we did, and we were talking about you know like. Um, it was actually like it was, it was interesting some of the things that we ended up talking about um and one of it was you you were talking about the ship getting and like its own egg like roger that mm -hmm. and, and you t you shouted out brandon and i had brought that up recently and i you know put a new spin on it but didn't remember that we had actually like even talked about it. Uh huh. And I, you know, uh, recently was mentioning like a way for Vegapunk to leave the island if he's dead. So it's like we already know that he's downloading his consciousness. Like the the, the satellites are two punk records. Two punk records. So I yeah. feel like there has to be a fail safe in place if Vegapunk dies. So my thing was to build on this idea of like Luffy getting his own egg, it would actually be a computer that goes onto the onto the Sunny and becomes like a mini punk records, a mini egghead, and it's like you get like a force ghost Vegapunk 
that is like walking around the sunny because it can project his hologram and you you know you get the oh, gags I love that. you get the gags from that robin like downloads information into the computer and then like they're like processing and putting everything together and like he like technically becomes part of the crew but he's dead so he, they can only talk to him when they're on the ship I, I i like that a lot because another because you know obviously punk records is inside the egg and egghead so it's already egg shaped right but it's like cracked open but you know what i mean yeah well it's ob- it's way too big to put on the sunny but we uh you know luffy just happens to have stretching powers with his awakening he could just shrink it down into a smaller egg and just use that alone. But I like what you're saying about the holograms in particular though, because that's like a big point of emphasis kind of in this arc, like at least at at the beginning, they're like, what's real and not. And that that hasn't exactly culminated into anything specifically. Yep. I like that. Uh, Random question, just because I saw it earlier. Do you think the message is coming from Egghead? Um, I, I've, I've had people in chat, suggests that it's you know actually coming from Kamabaka and that is interesting only because um, if you look at everybody that is in the Revolutionary Army in that scene they're acting like it's news to them but Dragon is like looking off and remembering the conversation that he had with Shaka at the beginning of the arc Mm -hmm. and it would be a good tie if the other side of that conversation that Oda cut before we actually you know like finish that call was that Chaka was like explaining what the fail safe was and inviting Dragon into the process. And if that's the case, then it goes back to what I was talking about earlier about how the whole point of what this message is, is to bolster the Revolutionary Army. So it's, he okay, Dragon I like that angle. Has, a, has, a, has a stake in it. He knows it's happening and he knows what the result is going to be. I love that. That... So, uh, so I, I really like the Revolutionary Army spin you're taking on this whole thing, because that's not something I've really considered, like, the galvanizing of the forces element. You know what I'm saying? Like, like because that's, like you said, that's what, like, the Flame Emperor thing, the Bellow Betty's powers are, like, the first the first time we saw the Revolutionary Army in action post, like, whole, like with the Reverie stuff, remember how, like, the, one of the first things we see them do is go into Lelucia, galvanize the forces, get them to fight back against the enemy instead of the reverse. And that's basically what they're trying to do around the world. You know what I mean? They need everyone to be motivated. So that's like, I really like that angle, but there is one other option that appeals to me. And I know at least one person in the chat, but what if it's coming from O'Hara? So it finishes, you know, like, cause Clover was going to say the name there and he didn't get to. And then going back to Robin, what if it does get shut off? Cause Vegapunk gets saved, but Robin can, you know, send her body elsewhere and, you know, finish it there. Someone cooked here. I have that one also. Because it's like, no one would expect it because it's just a pile of ash. So if they set up some sort of like weird shop on where the, like the water was, that, that'd be crazy. I love that. Shout out to Kev. Kev, Kev did a video on that right when the chapter dropped. It was his, it was his big agenda. Uh, I, I like it. D.O.G. Yeah. Shout out to Kev. Yeah. He's I'm in chat. Gets a, gets a that. Yeah, that, uh, like this, the idea that Robin can finish it literally where Clover was going to start it or tried to finish Clover. it, you know, like that would just be, like you said, like nobody would think of it. And then, you know, what that might also do is maybe give an increased importance to the Mother Flame a little bit, because like when you go Buster Call an Island, you leave it, you leave still an island there. So they got the books. Now, if the transmission comes from there, it's like, yeah, we need to be mother flaming all the islands. You know, like we just we got to delete them entirely. Um. Oh, I was muted. Um, I was saying shout out to to um Kev Kev to, Dog Kev Dog. He's in the he's in the chat. He gets to cook for that. Um, yeah, I love that. Uh, I've been I've been like I've been muting myself to prevent the reverb, and I forgot to turn it back on then. Yeah. And if there's any reverb the other way, let me know because I can do the same. But they haven't complained about you. I I I, I doubt it because I I talk too softly. Yeah, I talk extremely loud. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Well, well, next time I do a collab with Chrissy, I'm gonna have to do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I ever, ever since I was a kid, I was always the one like, hey, you gotta talk library voice. So. Um. 
But see, I, I, I would love if there's some, you know, the princesses in another castle type situation with all of this where if he's the smartest man in the world, then he's got to anticipate this and have fail safes for all of it. So it's like they get into the control room and then they realize, oh no, you guys are in the new world. Guess what? The broadcast is coming from the South Blue. I mean, the West Blue. Yep. Um, that would be so damn my mic was off again i thought oh. I, I, th I literally <laughs> thought i turned it back on i would say i what i what i love about that is i want a princesses in another castle scenario with all of this um and if he's supposed to be the smartest man in the world then there needs to be a situation where they get into the control room and they think they stopped the broadcast but no it's coming from the west blue uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm in the same boat for especially because you know we just saw Mars get really close to the room and there's like six minutes left, so it's like he, Oda's not gonna have Mars just walk in and cut it off with five minutes left. You know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna go to the wire one way or the other. And if he's already near the room, you know, ask where it is with York and everything. Like it, it's gonna take him less than a minute to find it at this point, probably. And it's like he could just destroy it right there. So if it, it might have to be somewhere else. And what I would love is if that's how we actually get out of this situation, because they start doing another summoning to get to where it's really being uh, sent from. So then it's like, it, it, it's a situation where uh, we didn't lose the battle. They left because to them, it's more important to shut down what's happening. But then they go to where it is, right? Because they get information from York, but Big Brain Vegapunk told all of the satellites that- The wrong place. The wrong place. So that it's still actually in Ohara, but York is sending them somewhere else. And then they I don't have enough time to get to Ohara to stop it. And I mean, they, they will eventually stop it. Right. But enough of the information will actually get out. I like that actually. And Oh, man, there's like, uh, so I'm trying to think. There's like a couple different scenarios I thought in my head there. So basically, if, so you know how Saturn said, I'm going to perform the summoning and summon them all there, but Saturn had to literally ride a ship over there. What if they can't go to Ohara because they're all here and they have to have one person like plant the seed? <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Yeah, I've talked about that as well. And, um, and I, um, I do, I do like that. It's a, it's a nice handicap that means like literally all of them would have to ride some sort of a ship back to get to Marajoa, which means that while they're doing all of that, like Augur could literally warp over there and, and do what Blackbeard needs to, needs mm -hmm. to do it at the Holy Land. But then it kind of steps on my new agenda that Shanks can kind of teleport wherever he wants with this, gotcha. with the summoning circle as well. So I think that um, I think the real reason that Saturn uh, didn't just teleport himself over to Egghead was that it's probably a taxing thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's not some. It's like it's a last resort type thing, and it's, it's like eh, you know I've got all these people to go and do this stuff. Kizaru can handle this, and right. then it's like, oh wait, you can't. Fine, I'm mm -hmm. going to I'm going to make a move now. And then it's like, oh, things are escalating. Okay, everybody get here. And then it's when they start doing it, then it'll be like, okay, now we're going to move to this island. Oop, we're on the wrong island again. Now we're going to go over to this island. Okay. But uh, if it is a situation where one person needs to be there, then it's um, even more likely that like why Oda didn't show us God Valley is because the summoning occurred there as well. Because mm -hmm. Saturn was there. Which would make sense, I feel like. Yeah, it'd probably, probably be pretty likely. I think one interesting thing in this regard is that if you... So we haven't seen Saturn's... Like, like where Saturn was on the ship. Like, we haven't seen if, like, there's a circle under where he was before. You know what I'm saying? Like, like because we saw that with the Room of Authority. We saw that there was, like, one big circle in the center that they apparently all took. But then they appear in four separate ones when they arrive. And I don't know, like, you know, 
I mean, it's anyone's guess right now, but like that, it, that makes it feel weird to me where it's like, why is there one big circle to send you, but then like four different ones appear, which like just tying to this, how, like who summons who, does there have to be someone there kind of thing. Tying back to the idea that we haven't seen Saturn's yet, like we haven't seen where Saturn's real body was originally, like, is he going to have like a circle just like that? Or does he have something special because he went there and like, is there some, you know, maybe it's more taxing to do the far distance, but less taxing to do the close distance because he does it a different way or something. Like, I don't know. There's so much like, so much that Oda hasn't shown with the circles. I like, I have no idea what's really, you know, make of it. But we did see Saturn's uh, circle. So, I I mean, I... We saw him summon, but not the where he was, like on the ship. You know what I mean? We don't know like if he just has a circle under him where his body was originally, or what if his body. Oh, you're still you're there. talking about the idea that um, he's still on the ship. And, that and then he's astro projecting over to. Uh, it, it, I've heard that too. Because if he's the one who's doing the summoning, maybe it's because he's the one who's like his body is nearby, so he's able to do it. You know, so like. I mean, you could, what they could also do that'd be kind of fun is like if they need to get somewhere, maybe they send one Gorosei over with S Bear's powers or something. You know what I mean? It's like get over there. But it would take a while, but yeah, it would take a while. They wouldn't they wouldn't get there in time at mm-hmm. all. Shout out to Par in the yeah. chat. He said, uh, "Huh, Dax and Cali? <laughs> Dax ain't got a coast. No, I'm on, I'm on all the coasts at the same time." Uh. Par wants to get uh, flown out. Par, I mean, we, we got room on the couch, man. You know, you fly on over. There's, there's this whole like section right here. This par vision sized section yeah. right in the middle. But I only have two microphones, so B Y O M. Um, and a, a USB splitter. That was actually my first mic I ever had. The same color. The oh fifth, yeah. Was it the tenth anniversary? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just got this uh, for this. Oh, really? So, oh, but appreciate I mean, it. I'll use it. You should. With Chrissy, so. Oh, great. Um, Par, I don't have access to that. <laughs> the OPLA budget. Yeah. You can't just call up Oda. Oda doesn't want Par here. The, the, the reveals that would, that would occur, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um,. Par, make your magic circle. <laughs> yeah, well, could, uh, start the summoning. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll get started here because we're here. You know, right, we, can, exactly. we can bring them. Yeah. What? Also, just curious. What do you think the circles are made of? Like, like they're like. Is it just hockey? Like, not painting. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's the thing. Is like I I think it's I think it's magic, but they just call the magic hockey. Yeah. I think it's because they well they they're even saying like what is this hockey you know this entire like they said it like five times like Jinbei and everyone's like oh my god I can feel it you know like the lightning it's everywhere it's like I think it's just hockey and they like literally are using hockey to like form the circle probably like it's the the most like it's the the highest authority of hockey it's the top form of hockey which is why you know a, a hockey man like Shanks should be able to teleport yeah I mean. If, if that's how they work, he should. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's all it's all just hockey. It's just hockey. But it, it's going to be the you know the highest form of it, and we're gonna that that's what we need to learn. And I I would actually love it if it was a thing where. You know, when we meet Shanks's crew, it's like a little mini time skip, like two weeks or something, where like his crew are actually like teaching them the basics of like this stuff because mm-hmm. it's the only way that they're going to be able to fight the Gorosei. And I actually like that because uh, for a long time, and I know I think Par is on this agenda also, where I think top tier hockey lets you mimic Devil Fruits essentially. You know what I mean? Like when your hockey's so good, you can like. We kind of already seen this a little bit with like life return, how you can like transform a little bit. So it's like kind of like a mini zone kind of thing. But like with hockey, so like one of my one of my favorite examples is like Yasov's name is Chaser. So what if he can use hockey to make his bullets literally chase the person? You know what I mean? Like he can like redirect it after he shoots. Well, that would be like Vanderdecken's fruit, basically. Like that's like the maybe that's like the origin of the Mark Mark fruit. Like now, how did they put it into a fruit? I don't know, but I'm cool with that. That's fun. Um, 
Let's see. Lucy B. Supered and said, if the Gorosei are real demons, how did they come to be in the Void Century? Or did they lose their humanity at one point and become demons over time? I think that they were um, always there, like mythology. But something made them like covet the real world or something and and then they you know just decided hey we're not going to live in the shadows anymore and we're going to we're going to take over or they're from the moon i don't know yeah i uh i, th I think that is one of the ultimate questions right now because like like i said earlier you know devil fruits like they have devil in the name brooke was able to use one to go to the underworld and stuff so when we talk about like yokai or demons and all this kind of stuff it would make a lot of sense to me if like you're saying like they were demons in the underworld and they longed for the real world and they brokered a deal with the devil quote unquote maybe the devil was a human to be ironic you know like the, so they made a way to get back into the real world and that's and that's like what the circles are like maybe that's them bringing up like the true demon selves or whatever because they have to because like it, maybe it's not a devil fruit but like the ancient like you know retro way to do devil fruit powers or something then they made it easier by putting them in fruits or something but um, but yeah, I, I think, like you said, like maybe they're demons who long for the real world made a deal, or they might have been humans who wanted the devil's power to like take over the world, and that's what. And then maybe they did something like the what's it called, like Harha Hitania, the the place that Brooke went to. I think it's Harha Hitania is what it's called. Yeah. Like Namakura Island, but but it's, but Harha Hitania is the place. Yeah. But but yeah. Um. Yeah, it, or it could have been a thing where the ancient kingdom tapped in to, you know, this and maybe by experimenting with dark magic, dark arts or something, unlocked uh, or opened a portal, yeah. you know, into the the yokai world and let them out. Yeah. And then it's like, maybe that's the, uh, maybe that's the apology. I'm sorry for opening the portal. We, maybe maybe Joy Boy died. They tried to go bring him back by opening this portal, and all they brought out were the demons because maybe Joy Boy isn't even in the, like that part of the underworld or something. You know what I mean? Or I don't know how that would work, but yeah. But you know what that reminds me of is Impel Down because Impel Down massive breakout. Impel Down's hell. There's all those parallels. You go to level six. Blackbeard got five of his crew members there. Well, like you got four from the actual cells and then Shiri was in a different section, but you know, five from level six and how many Gorosei are there? Five, right? So it's like, did Emu get the most dangerous devils from the underworld to, you know, work under them? And so like talking about this breakout idea where they just like, you know, the leaders of it, cause they were like the toughest spot. Cause remember how Blackbeard even had everyone fight in level six to get the strongest ones. What if that's the same thing? Those are the top five on all the underworld because like they fought, and so that's Emu's underlings, basically. Yeah, I think I think that might be my favorite idea to come out of this so far. Is that the apology is because the let them in let them you know like if there was some sort of a barrier and then the barrier was broken and then now the these the almost unstoppable forces were there and they didn't understand how to uh, they started messing with things they didn't understand and it and it so, like so this is a little bit of a spoiler i guess for my future origin of devil fruits video but so talking about this joy boy saving aspect wasn't really or like you know or Joy Boy's crew doing it wasn't really part of my agenda, but I think the outbreak, if all those devils did escape, that could be how devil fruits were made. They didn't know what else, like, where do we put these devils? We can't send them back. Like, we can't even kill them. What do we do? We put them into these fruits so they're stuck, but then whoever eats them gets the powers. So that's like, that's my idea. Like, they, it's like the devils escaped. That's the only, all we can do. Yeah. So then, I mean, if that's the case, then it's got to be, you know, a situation where you're actually um, becoming, you have to become one with the devil that's inside the fruit. So it's like the, the Goma Goma no Mi has eluded them for 800 years because literally the, the soul, I mean, we've talked about this, I've talked about this before, but I mean, like literally the soul or the energy, you know, or whatever of Nika is actually in the fruit. And, you know, it's like, then you can take a situation where it's like, 
we get into like really weird, wacky void century stuff and um, the demon that eventually became the Hanahana no Mi maybe looks like Demonio Floor. Yep. You know, and it's like, that was, you know, because how do you explain that? Like, what is that? Why is there a transformation that she's able to, to do that unless she, she actually just made a pact at that moment right. to swap places uh, you know, I've been watching JJK recently, you know, so it's oh, like, yeah. like, so if it's like a, you know, a, a Sukuna um, situation with the, uh, with the fruits and the Demonio floor was like when Robin switched with Sukuna. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goat right there, man. Sukuna. I love Sukuna. I, how, how far are you? Uh, I just finished Hidden Inventory. Okay. Uh, you, you got a little ways to go. Yeah, I got to Um. Which, by the way, we, we watched Hidden Inventory on Twitch on Wednesday. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna watch JJK Zero next. Twitch.tv slash Randy Troy. And then when we finish JJK Zero, we're gonna get back into uh, wrapping up uh, season two. We had fun though. You gonna read the manga after that? Uh, maybe, maybe, or you know, I'll I'll see how I feel because I I like I like having something that's just anime, but um if i'm like really you know like oh i need more hey yeah well, well it's it's ending sometime soon the author has like he he said last summer that that was going to be his last jump festa doing like with jjk still running but if i, if I was a betting man I, I don't think it's going to end that quickly but it's going to end soon so it might be kind of cool if you could just you know be caught up for, to, for the ending but the anime is Definitely cooler. <laughs> so it's, it's up to you. <laughs> the anime is like peak, man. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. Um, so, and it, it was, you know, I, I tried it when it was coming out and I wasn't vibing, but then I got to Nanami and, and, oh. and I'm, I'm like, that, oh. that's my, that's my, my goat right there. Love him. Uh, Terrence Matthews superintendent said people need to put respect on Luffy's name. That's for sure. I agree. Blackbeard does. I always like talking about Blackbeard doesn't, Truck, like believe in Luffy, like he always downplays him. Like you have a thirty million bounty, no way. A hundred, this kid, no chance. You're a fifth emperor, you're not ready. Like he's always talking him down. But it's funny because it, that kind of only happened when he realized who he was, because he was really talking him up when they first met outside mm -hmm. of the bar in Mocktown, and then it wasn't until he started putting things together that he was just like, I, I don't know. But when he, but just meeting him, he was just like, hmm, okay, you might have something here. Mm -hmm. um, Ian Super said, uh, can't catch right now at work, but I'm absolutely gonna, absolutely gonna catch the VOD for the absolute chefing I'm sure is happening. Drop a like. Yeah, listen to Ian, like, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. Um, I'm here with uh, Chef Daxake, and we're <laughs> cooking up a Michelin meal. I, I used to run a restaurant, so, you know, the chef name is true. Hey. It was a Chipotle, so it doesn't really count, but. Hey. <laughs> you were cooking. Well, honestly, we do. It's actually pretty real food at Chipotle, so I guess if there was one place where it would count, that might be it. You know, I was on grill. All right. Shout out to uh, to Chipotle. You're getting you're getting real food. Um, narrator super chatted and said, what if there is a backstory for original Nika being raised by Minx? And so his idea of strong was based on Sulong form when he created his devil fruit power. I love the narrator voice. I mean, you gotta do it. I mean, when Kermit D. Frog comes to the chat, I gotta, oh, I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta talk like Kermit too. Um, <laughs> uh, that's that's interesting. So it's inverting my thought that Sulong came from Nika, but it's actually that uh, you know, like Gear Five technically came from Sulong. But then the my only disagreement with that would be Luffy turning into it because I don't think he actually saw Sulong form. Or was conscious to even notice it. I don't think he's ever seen one. Because even like the only one I could think of is Peckoms, but like he was kind of passed out. Right. 
Did, did, and didn't 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 we not even see it in the manga? Like I think we can assume it happened, but like he was about to activate it, and they're like, yeah, his eyes I, out. yeah, I'm thinking about the anime where yeah. like, like, they, like he actually they you know they, they actually show like he was like fighting people, but like in the in the manga, I don't even know if I mean I, you could probably assume he did, but we didn't even see it, so like he may there may not have even been a suit long for Luffy to see in that regard. Yeah, and Sanji also got him like right away and got out of there, right? So he probably wasn't paying attention. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I like the I like the the thought of it though. Same. And also, one thing I did want to mention about that too was it's th- that that idea is interesting. Thinking about how they said that, like the minks are like, oh, we consider humans hairless monkey minks, you know, like that connection. And Luffy's obviously monkey D Luffy, so. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, narrator super chatted two other times, and said, "Haki is chakra or spirit or soul or will, all meaning the same thing, and it's." Produced by the spiral of the lineage factor in every living organism. The lineage factor has two spirals, allowing for a second hockey, or will, or soul, from a devil fruit to attach to it. But what if someone had two lineage factors? Uh, so I think you're getting into the, um, the stuff that I've heard about Blackbeard over the years. With like... Mm-hmm double lineage factors, two souls. Um, but it's, I think everything that you're saying there is um, warranted and it, it makes me want to kind of do a deep dive into uh, chakra in the, in the first place because there's so much um, mythology and everything and uh, especially like uh, Buddhism and Hinduism you know, and even Shintoism, of course, uh, rooted in one piece, but even like coming to the surface now with the mythologies that we, we just saw the Gorosei turn into. So, uh, and Zoro is so tied to all of it. And that's another thing too, is like, as we start getting into these demons and we start talking about all this stuff, it, you know, we have to talk about cursed swords. We have to talk about like, what the hell is Asura in the first place? Like, is it a manifestation of the the cursed sword taking over Zoro? You know, what is that? But it's like, it is literally a, um, it is a demon that, you know, has roots in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism, you know? So it's yeah, like, that's like, you know, you know there's it, gonna be a connection. It, it's just, there's so, so many, so many different layers well, of things. It, and one thing, narrators, you mentioned like a second soul or, or whatever. Well, we actually know that that already exists in one piece with a shadow. Like, Brooke literally called it a second soul or like similar to a second soul, but he used that phrasing. Yep. So um, I'm waiting for shadows to come back. They may already be with the Gorosei to some level. Like, I doubt it's as simple as shadows, but. Um, I mean, I would love if it tied into the shadow and then, would, you know, definitely go into things that Parr has talked about. Yeah, the, the, the shadow hockey. Yeah. Or like hockey is your shadow or yeah but i mean like if these summoning circles and all that stuff is you know anything has anything to do with shadows then that that becomes fun as well and oda clearly has some sort of a plan for moria we, mm-hmm. you know i don't know what it is uh beyond like my main huge thought is still that moria by way of perona like joins cross guild but mm-hmm. um like what is the end game for it and like that fruit is so important also because Peter Pan is such an influence on this story and yeah. you know shadows is a big part of that there's so many Peter Pan references in Thriller Bark and it's just like it, it it's all it's all going to come into the into the end game of that and that's going to be a video at some point but and, and emu like, like emu's first attack being the I call it, I call it the YouTube thumbnail attack. Uh, shout out King Recon. He's the first one who said that. But like it's just like that arrow, but it's like a black arrow. It's like stretched, like kind of like what you would expect from a shadow. Like if you go back to Morian Marineford, he did I forget what it's called, but like that lizard attack where it's like a long shadow thing and it stabs somebody. It's the same thing. It just has a lizard on the tip instead of an arrow. So it's like there's and also like they wanted Moria caught multiple times or whatever. Like they even sent Kuma. Like Kuma, go make sure he's not going to lose. Like. And I know the reasoning was like, oh, we just lost one. We don't want to lose another. But I think you could easily read it as like, 
they just knew Moria was way too important to lose because like his fruit's so important. Because then they also like told Doflamingo to go take him out and stuff. So it's like there's something with shadows that's gonna get uncovered later. I completely agree with that. Uh, Yamil said, uh, "What if Brook was going to land elsewhere, and the Summoning Circle pulled him uh, to Namakura instead? It's one of the flu few places that we never saw Kuma at. Um, is there anything that could be misinterpreted as maybe that we saw him there? But I actually do love that idea. You know, if he if it's specifically because Brook has a tie to the underworld that like." It pulled him there. Like, like he is like a devil by like the way the rules work with it or something. Like, well, let's find the nearest devil to pull in. Yeah. Or, or exactly. even the weakest one, which like, I love Brooke, but like compared to the Gorosei, I'm sure, you know, Brooke's not that strong. But if it was a thing where this cult like actually was pulling techniques that the Gorosei are using in a rudimentary fashion, and but because they had so many people in the cult, they were able to like pull something off because they're all collectively putting their own energy into what this mm -hmm. is. Then there's a situation like that where it's like, I could, I could believe that like mm -hmm. they could summon something and it just so happened to be Brooke at that time. Yeah, like that they're only strong enough to bring Brooke. Now, the one thing that maybe uh, debunks that a little bit is we did see like the paw in the ground. You know what I'm saying? Like it, the Paul like destroyed the circle basically. Right. But I think the logic could just be like it pulled Brooke, you know, towards it or something. Um, and one other thing about that situation that I meant to mention earlier, but I forgot is just tying it to like the Gorosei and stuff is remember the reason that they were even doing that summoning circle stuff was because they wanted to beat the long arm tribe, right? They were like, like they had this long war with the long arm tribe that has been going on for like a thousand years. Right, so you think about the Void Century being 900 years. That's why I wanted Brooke and uh, Apu to have a little scrap and one oh, it never happened. Uh, that, two musicians, that's, like, it that, felt so perfect. That, that's almost as bad of a miss, in my opinion, as um, uh, uh, Sasaki, like not being revealed as Kokoro. Yeah, that, that, that is my, that's one of my biggest pet peeves ever, because it's so obvious. And it really should have been uh, like even a thing like in an SBS. Yep. Like it, it's so like it. There's so it's so clear. Like just make this dude Chimney's dad yeah, or please. something, you know. And then it's like then, you know, like I was right on the money that Sasaki would fight Frankie. Yeah. And then I was like, it's okay, let, let, let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yep. Like, and then have him say like, hey, you know, Chimney's waiting for you or something. And then it's like then you get this moment where you can get a turn yep. naturally built into the story from something that you had from years ago. And it's like, oh wow cool minor character coming in you know it's like it's the Izo effect no one expected Izo to be like um a major important figure and then you know gets all of this time to shine in Wano then he, he has one of the only confirmed kills in Wano I feel like you know what I mean against Maha right yeah shout out to Izo having an actual body count yeah um him and Killer Killer living up to his name oh <laughs> true that is crazy but Oh, actually, and also, like you were saying, um, with, you know, Sasuke, like Frankie was fighting him. It was so obvious to me. That's like kind of like with who's who in the, the Devil Fruit and Shanks connection. Like, that's what made that fight cool is that like he brought up Nika. He brought up Shanks. He brought up the fruit. Like, OK, that fight's memorable, not even because of the fight, but because of the other layers to it. Right. Talk going back to CP9 and Lucci and stuff. But then with Frankie, like, what do we remember about fighting Sasuke? You remember the, the helicopter? He turned into it. Yeah, yeah. To helicopter. which, like, which cool, goes but... back into this idea of belief where it's just like they don't know what a you know a, a, a triceratops you know mm -hmm. can do or anything like that so they just believe and conceive that it can do these things so I think that that's actually the root of the power it they're all potentially imagination based emu may be short for imagination because it's really mm -hmm. em sama not em um, oh, I like that. And it it's just Luffy is like the embodiment of of that, you know, the, the light form of imagination. And then Emu could be like the dark, you know, Yang. Uh, I love that uh, form of of imagination. But everybody has, you know, it's you're as strong as your imagination will allow. And I think that that's something that is shown through in the series to begin with. It's like. 
you know, it even goes back to like what Crocodile was saying, not in these words, but it's like you have to learn to be creative with your fruit. Your fruit is able to to do uh, a lot of things if you allow it. You're yeah. able to awaken if you become creative with your ability. I like that a lot. Yeah, I because I mean, you think about King, right? With the the slingshot, yeah, exactly. you know, whatever you want to call it. It's just like they, they. I mean, these are true. You know, this is true paleont- paleontology. That's what those those creatures could do. But I, I also think it's it's an element of Oda making a joke, but also telling us like, hey, this is actually what the power system is. It's it's belief. They're able to transform into this thing, and they're able to do things if they believe that they can do it. And it's like that's what the whole series is about. I'm going to become the king of the pirates. No, you can't do that. That that's impossible. I'm going to do it anyway. This whole he series, believes it. Exactly. This whole series and everything about it is trying to teach people, you know, shonen, young kids, young boys, uh, you know, that's the target audience, but mm-hmm. it, anybody that reads it, it doesn't, yep. you know, regardless of, uh, uh, you know, gender or anything, but I mean, like, that's, in, you know, that, that that's the way that they're thinking about it, is that if you have a goal in your life and you have something that you want to achieve, you can do it, and the characters in the story are emblematic of that by going after their their own dreams or believing in that their abilities will be able to do something. No, I, I love that. The, the connection to the zone forms there is like one of my favorite things because like, like you said, they wouldn't know, right? Like they would have no idea really what a Triceratops or a Pteranodon does, right? They're just like, they're guessing or you maybe you could have some through line where like because they have the fruit maybe like you know because they can transform into it maybe like they have a feel for it or something but it's just like like you're saying like if somebody read a book about it they wouldn't they would just immediately write that off as a possibility but like i like that and also what you talked about with uh im sama like short for imagination possibly well remember when when emu spoke to cobra Emu referred to themselves as Mu, like in the third person, and that can mean void or dream. So going back to like dream, imaginations and stuff, it's like literally in the name you have imagination and dream like in different ways. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, shout out to Double O Flevance. One of the best names on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. I love it. Um, two goats cooking up. Love to see it. Appreciate you sliding in, my man. Uh, Terrence Matthews, I believe that Emu is a demon king like Tot Musica. Have you heard the old saying, caught between the devil and the deep blue sea? You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Um, (laughs) This is just what what that uh, (laughs) reminds me of. Um, And this also reminds me of... um, Never rub another man's (laughs) rhubarb. Uh, something that Brandon asked uh, in the community post because uh, he was talking about Top Musica and wanted us to kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, a lot to dig into there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, said, uh, can't wait for the two goats to hash it out again. Was wondering if you could bring this up. I think after film Red and all this stuff with Uta literally summoning a demon with a demonic song, we should take a closer look at Top Musica, uh, the demon, and the lore surrounding it. Anime movies tend to rehash material from current and upcoming arc. Strong World is literally Beta Wano. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, a floating man and his floating island. Uh, don't forget the part. Uh, you know, this is a message here, but you know, they both wanted to wait 20 years. Yep. Um, uh, a menagerie of wacky animal combos, a fake plant similar to the smiles. So with all the gore say being demonic creatures, I think it's worth a look at the discussion. Yeah, I think when uh, Toei approaches Oda about potential ideas for the movies, especially when he's been com- getting involved in everything, I think... Uh, whether it's subconscious, unconscious, fully conscious, um, he is drawing from ideas that that he has, um, you know, for the end game, and probably maybe even you know regrets using some of that stuff um, for the for the Agreed. movies rather than being in the uh, the actual canon. 
but like I think a fleshed out Zephyr arc would have been phenomenal. Oh. Um, yeah. Like the the drama and everything that came out of that was great, but um, think of, when you take into consideration what's happening right now and you look at Film Red, what happened in Film Red? A giant live stream that was being broadcast to the entire world, and what are we dealing with right now? A giant live stream that's going to be broadcast to the entire world. Oda does give ideas that are going to play into the end game into that. So then let's think about what happened in film red everybody uh all of these uh marines and was it a buster call that ended up going there i don't know but either way a bunch of marines even an admiral kizaru um showed up to stop the broadcast so true uh and then what also happened at the end shanks showed up to protect luffy so it's like, I, I'm not trying to say that Shanks is going to pull up at the end, but I also, like, if we're going to set up that this power that the Gorosei use, like this teleportation, this um, this summoning circle, something, if there is power in there that our crew can use, that Luffy can learn, mm -hmm. then having Shanks show up is something um, that benefits the story because it shows that this is attainable, not just because they can do it. Um, now, as far as Tot Musica is concerned, I don't know. I mean, is that... Is that Emu? <laughs> <You know? laughs> is it Emu? Is it... Are, are the ancient weapons, you know, all living things, which I already believe in the first 100%. place because you have the, the Sea Kings. They're, they're alive. Yep. Um, so... Pluton's got to be alive. I know you. You already know. He's, we got the mole man right here. I'm waiting. See that Hans. Hey, if, if I see a mole in the cover story, you, you won't hear the. I mean, remember one of my favorite parts about the mole theory, just real quick, is in the cover story in Gadatsu's, which, by the way, Gadatsu fell from a sky island and hit, hit the blue sea and survived. Kaido fell from Sky Island, hit the blue sea, survived. He's the one who was, you know, holding Pluton the whole time. Well, in that cover story, that's where we see the mole with Mount Fuji on his helmet. So now tying back to this cover story, which started at the base of Mount Fuji underwater, you know. But like you said, I don't want to see Pluton in the cover story. Like, that has to be in the manga. But if, like, you, for instance, the cover story showed Blackbeard pulling up and, like, Gura Gura the wall, and that's, like, the end of the cover story. So then we cut to the manga and see it actually happen. That might, that might work. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had a... The same, I'm pretty sure it was the same chapter where we saw that Pudding was with yep. Blackbeard. 1064. It, it, it was the cover story it was Alkaji and, uh, mm -hmm. and Augur with Pudding on the cover. So it was like you were getting that and it just seemed like, oh, okay, well, I got to explain this. But mm -hmm. no, in the same way that like we just had this giant splash panel of all of the Gorosei um on a double page spread like a an actual double page spread which of course I, you know that went viral that that was the first actual double page spread since sun's cups mm -hmm. um have we had double page spreads yes but they were not clean they had close-ups in the corner they had you know other um little page markers like it wasn't a thing that was completely unbroken in just one image like if pluton is truly a mole like it better be a full double page spread Agreed. like that showcasing that hey this thing that was mentioned in chapter 190 something yeah or even know, is, yeah you think you're right needs to be not in a cover story mm -hmm. it needs to be in the manga it needs to be in the, yeah. the actual story don't the the reliance on the cover stories is a cool aspect for fans that are reading, but casuals aren't paying attention to it. They're not remembering yeah. all of it. You shouldn't rely on everybody that is a fan of the property to be sitting in a stream, you know, or talking about this on YouTube, you know, the, remembering everything that's going on, checking out all of the extended media, looking at the yeah. Beaver cards, seeing the SBSs every time it's just like you you have a story and it's it's got to be there Barry yeah. just said give it the weight reverence and reveal that it deserves so that's that's where my concern mm -hmm. and my worry is with this 
cover story. And it's, I normally wouldn't have that reservation if we didn't just have like the huge reveals in the last cover story. Not yeah. only just the the uh, pudding stuff, but also a lot of this, you know, this Vegapunk stuff with, you know, meeting the Gorosei and all that, like that that's in lieu of giving Vegapunk his own flashback. True. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. He replaced the flashback with the cover story, part of it at least. And also Neomads formed at the very end of that cover story, which like... Why it, Why would, like, if we're cutting back to the Cross Guild, why wouldn't we just see, like, just give me three pages of, of you know, Caesar, Judge, you know, forming Neomads? Huh. Yeah, exactly. Like, and you know, one of the one of the things I talked about in my last video, which I actually I want to do a video on just all the cover stories and just go through all of them, because like I feel like not a lot of people know about them. Like you were saying, like, like like we're talking about with this mole thing. Like it shouldn't. Like nobody even knows that. Like I didn't know that until I was literally like doing research. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't even know Gadatsu had a cover story series, and it's like nope. It's just hard to remember all that. So now with the cover story series happening now. You know, one of the biggest trends that Oda's ever done is the cover stories are to show you what past villains did after we beat them. That's like, that's majority of the past cover stories. So now with Kaido and Big Mom, you know, you know like I think Pluton's enticing, but Kaido and Big Mom's super likely. But with, like we were saying with the last one, it was originally, this is how Germa escapes Whole Cake. That was like, a, that was supposed to be the point of it, you know. But then Blackbeard Pirates show up. We even see, you know, Katakuri. Not losing, but, you know, losing... Like, he was punched oven because he was confused with the hallucination gas. Like, there's so many other completely random things that have really nothing to do with the origin of it, so... Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people forget and don't remember that, like, we saw Lelucia in Ace's cover story. Yep. You know, so, like, that was the thing. When it was getting Lelucia when we were there in 904 and everything like that... Like, I don't even remember a lot of people talking about it when it was happening in 904. More people were talking about it when it was getting blown up. But it was just like, um, yeah, Mode of the Milk Girl was introduced in a cover story. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, Kami was introduced in a cover story. Yep. Um, and Papag. Uh, like, the Enel cover story is the craziest to me. Because For sure. It's just like... Went to the freaking moon. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's just going to be like so much relevance there that, uh, and it was never animated, so we can't even look for the finer details in the, in the anime. Um, I hope they they do that, man. At some point, like the NL cover, even if they did it now, it would it would it would hit probably even harder now, just because people are waiting for NL to come back. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, we'll we'll get something when uh, uh, he'll he'll likely be a part of Elbaf, so. I uh, highly agree. Uh, Vasil Vlad Bonavici said, if you alternate the lyrics of Bink Sake and Top Musica, you get an entire new song. Um, that's interesting, but I can't visualize what um, what you say. I would have to see it written out the way that you're um, saying it to understand what um, I'm, I can't put it put it together right now. I'm, I'm going to look that up later, though, because I, I love theories about what Bink Sake's lyrics are about. Like, cause def, it's going to be something like, I don't, you know, there's a lot of different ideas on it, so I don't really know yet, but adding top music as lyrics and music is such an important thing to one piece in general. Um, it like affects your emotions and, you know, Brooks, the music guy came from the underworld so much to it. So, yeah. Um, what do you think about Calico Yorkie now that we're talking about pink sake? What do you mean? What do I think? Like, is you he going to come back? That think, kind of question. You think he's you think he's alive? You think he died? What, what what's what's your take? I think the most likely thing is he just died, and he's just he's not going to come back. But that's not to say that I think that definitely happened because the fact we never actually saw him dead is, you know, I'm I'm a big believer in no body, no death when it comes to Ichiro Oda. Yeah, that's a huge thing for me. So, um, so I don't really have a theory on it. I, I would guess that he's dead, but do you have an idea? Do you have theory uh i do i was I, I was thinking about making a video about it but at the same time it's like i don't know if i have enough meat for it but mm -hmm. it's like my my thought now is like um when you when you like when you go back to the uh the brook flashback and everything and york he goes away like he they they said that he sailed into the calm belt 
and like they just they they put him on put him on the ship, sent him to the comm belt. What's in the comm belt? Amazon Lily. So it's like, did I, I'm wondering if when we like get a little bit of exposition on like maybe even that missing Amazonian princess, mm-hmm. that the case of love sickness that they're talking about may have been with Yorkie. And then I started going down a rabbit hole where I was like, is Yorkie Luffy's other grandfather? And if that's the case, would that add this crazy relevance to Brooke pledging allegiance to Luffy? Not realizing that like the crew that he's on now is actually like a literal uh, descendant basically yeah, of his old like crews. a spiritual relation like i i love i you know I, I do a lot of familial connection things you know in different theories like i still love the idea that robin could be the half sister um i love the i, the, I you know I, i've said before that um i think the character's name is seto or, or something in the um nolan and calgara flashback mm-hmm. like really looks like luffy and it's yeah, like that's true what if you know, he was actually like, you know, back then, uh, you know, someone from, from well, Jaya, you know, like, like, and he's actually like, we can go back to Skypea and it's, he, he's like a distant cousin of Wiper well, in some way. Well, remember the Shandia chief looks like Garp. Yeah. They're, they're yeah like, exactly. They even but, have the dog mask. But, but not only that, what, what did Calgar do when we first saw him? He did the exact same move that Garp did with the chain, with the giant, like, cannonball on a chain yep, like yep. they both have the okay. same exact attack love that scene by the way but yeah yeah like the ship's like leaving and he just throws the cannonball yeah so it's like if calgara's daughter right moose right moose and then she was about to be sacrificed too so making she was, her she was about to be sacrificed exactly and she was in Calgara offered for her to marry nolan or like nolan you should marry my daughter and he's like All right, maybe i do have enough for a video maybe you do but, but um you should, you should just make this video. I, I like it already. <laughs> just make it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I would I would say that Moose is actually like a literal descendant or like uh, grandmother of of the of, sun god, and she was going to be offered the sun to- god that she was going to be offered to the sun god. Because, bro, like if I pull up the panel of the of the other dude in that flashback, like he is just he just looks like Luffy. So it's like then. It's just like Yorkie, Yorkie being alive and being Luffy's grandpa, like sat, that, that alone. But that sounds- would be on the other side. So like, like the so the the Garp side mm-hmm. is the Shandian side. So it's like, so it's like Moose and I think it's Set. I think it's Set, Seto. Set or Seto. I, it's Seto, or at least yeah. that's 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 what it says in the. Pun. I did a Nolan video. I remember yeah. Seto is what it says. So that Moose and Seto are like Garp's. Grand, grandparents or like you know like great, 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 great yeah, yeah, exactly generations yeah you know 200 years uh, 400 years ago um and then on luffy's mother's side that's where i think it would be yorkie and then someone from amazon lily so if you i love i think if you were to do a video you would have to you you couldn't make it <laughs> you know yorkie you couldn't market it as yorkie as luffy's grandpa but market is like you know Luffy's lineage, and like you know, because like I think the the the, the Skypea side, that is fire. Like I like I like that more than well, like because Luffy's mom could still be like the missing Amazonian princess if Yorkie ties into this or something. You know what I mean? Or like or his grandma or something. But well, in this scenario, it wouldn't necessarily even have to be that the Luffy's mom is the missing Amazonian princess. It would be that Luffy's like grandmother was right. Oh. Me. And then the, you know, like they left Amazon Lily or something, mm-hmm. and um, then Dragon met their daughter. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I don't know, but it's just, it's just so, I because I went back to that, to that flashback, and it was like it was so specific that Yorkie went into the calm belt. So it was like they were like sending him out there yeah. to like to like die. So it's like 
if he landed on Amazon Lily in the same way that Luffy did and was just like this one guy. Ooh, wait. Hold on. So right after Brooke joined is when they got separated and Luffy went to Amazon Lily, right? So right after Brooke joins the crew, his captain goes to Amazon Lily. Right after Brooke exactly. going yes. pack. Like, it, I was going to get into that as well. So it's like there's the parallels there. You might be cooking. If I had the if I had a stream deck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's it, dude. it's self-serving, but I'll hit it that, for myself. Yeah, oh well I pretend it's me who hit it. That's me. That's it. I actually have that one on my own stream Someone deck. So here. same thing. Dude, yeah. that like the way that you weave the Skypea stuff, because that to me is super believable. Like th that's where we found out about the Sun God. That's where the Nika pose first was. That's like one of Oda's favorite panels he's ever drawn. He said like in his top three. It's like then to make his lineage from there, and then to tie it also to Amazon Lily. And that like th that's yeah. Because I would love it if the Nolan and Calgar flashback, like which everybody's like, why did we get this? And it's like you find out later, like oh, this flashback was actually about like Luffy's family. Um, and then I also like like. I'm I'm definitely the originator of like the Seto and, and Moose thing and I've talked about that in, like very briefly and I, I might even have done it in the Joy Boy is a Snake video um, and I definitely called out the connections between Calgar and Garp but the um, and I'm definitely the originator of this Yorkie thing but the Noland is uh, one of Usopp's descendants. I think that's a Joy Boy Theories thing. Yeah, and I, I and I love that. Same. Like, I, like I'd love it if we found out that Usopp's last Mont, name is, is Mont Blanc. Same. Mont oh, Blanc, dude. D Usopp. Yeah. That's my that's my agenda for sure. <laughs> Please, man. Nolan Noland is in my Nolan might be my favorite non Straw Hat character. It's he, crazy. He's in the top I three love, for I sure. Love that though. Top three. Oh, I did a full forty minute video on that guy. Seriously, yeah, but, like there's so many like even ancient kingdom kind of like like void century parallels you can make because it's literally faith for science that whole thing where it's like he has the cure and he needs to make this like God following tribe listen to him like there's cause ancient kingdoms high tech now you know we know that bro I gotta I gotta stop you because Brandon is cooking okay go go for it he said wait a set is a dog if I recall correctly and Yorkie is also a dog Garp is a dog. That's 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 some Michelin star cooking right there. If you've got the 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 Sanji cooks, like I want to see yeah. them, please. <laughs> yeah. I want to see them in the chat. We, you know, we 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 had a uh, uh, you know twenty new members in this stream, so I know you guys have the emojis. Um, BK is always cooking, man. Brand Brand King. Oh yeah. All Time Lord. You know, whichever name. Yeah. Depending what platform. Um, what, what spices you got, BK? <laughs> I, pr I prefer this BK over the other BK, Burger King. Oh, for sure. That's my least favorite. For sure. Oh. Man, that, yeah. I love that. They also set up there in Skypea, they wish for a god, and then in Amakura, they wish for a demon. And so tying back to like Luffy being the god coming from there, you know, Brooke, like that's. You should make this video, man. Yeah, that might be that might be next. That's that's people love Luffy's lineage theories. Yeah, you know, you know if I if I go into it and I really like um, make it all about the the multiple connections, I think make it Luffy's lineage revealed <laughs> and just save the Yorkie stuff for later. Just you know what I mean? Just because well, I mean it would probably make sense to put it later, but yeah, I'll put but, it I'll put it at the end because it's the most nebulous. Yeah. Um, the 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 Skypea stuff is way stronger. Yeah, I mean that's. But the York, I don't know. I think that would be the craziest W ever. That landed. because it's also like here's a character that was introduced in chapter one hundred and two or something, and it's just okay. The the first thing we see as Luffy enters the Grand Line after we just met his his dad, yeah, technically, right is here's this guy from 50 years ago that's actually his grandfather. Yeah. Like, I could see Oda doing something like that. And I also feel like the connections between Luffy and Laboon are understated in terms of, like, 
the second Luffy entered the Grand Line and really started his journey, right? Because, like, the first part of the journey was getting to the Grand Line. Like, he always wanted to be the Pirate King, but that was, like... I remember even as a kid watching, like, four kids or whatever. I remember, like, man, I really want to see this Grand Line place. Like, they keep talking about heading over there. I want to... And I never got that far until I was an adult, but... um, (laughs) <laughs> but you know the first thing he sees is a whale and he's like we're gonna go around and once we're done then i'm gonna come see you again and we're, you know, we're gonna come back down the mountain and so like tying it back to all this like what if like his ancestors had the same you know like gorky being related to him had the same goal you know it's like he's carrying that will very directly you know i think the only thing about so yorky would be dead now uh, too old. In, in my idea of it all yeah but Which, that should happen because I love Laboon, but he shouldn't get to see anyone else from the Rumbar Pirates other than Brooke. Oda would need a really good reason for why Yorkie never went back to see Laboon. And I, I mm-hmm. and I would hope it's not just guilt. Well, well, it would be that he has to finish the journey first. Kind of like Brooke. He's like, we can't turn around. Oh. What if Yorkie is the man marked by flames? Oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, he. How old would he be now? He would like be, eighty, he like would, seventy something. He would be in his. He would be in his eighties, early nineties. Like if he's older than Brooke, um, which I I think he's probably younger than Brooke. So he might be. He could he could be anywhere from like Garp's age to, um, you know, But the the other thing too is is like they literally set him off on a ship into the calm belt to sail around and uh, to his death. Now, if he's the man marked by flames and like found out different things and it's like, he can't go back to Laboon because he found a new purpose to sail around with whatever is on that ship. If it's the final Poneglyph, which may have been on Amazon Lily because well, it ties to maybe Lily or something like that. And he learned something and Yo, oh, that would be the craziest thing if, like, we meet Saul, right? Robin meets Saul, but the then guy Brooke who we is, was dead. But Brooke is reuniting with Yorkie. That would be so crazy. Like, like, I, I guess the one thing I'm thinking is I don't know how he would get it because it was the one in Fishman Island, and so he would have to go down there and scoop it up. And it's and some I've always brought up with this is that. Whoever got that Poneglyph either needs to... They, they pretty much have to be best friends with Whitebeard. Because Whitebeard held the territory after that. You know what I mean? Like right Because Roger died a year after he went down there and got that. And then Whitebeard held it pretty much since then. It was I don't think we have an exact year, but it was like over 20 years ago. And so then, you know, other other Rocks pirates have had Poneglyphs. Like, Road Pone, like Kaido, Big Mom, you know what I'm saying? Have had Road Poneglyphs. So having Whitebeard technically be in charge of one would also make sense. But he just moved it. But either, either way, though, Yorkie would have to... And also something else is that the Fishmen, Jinbei, Jinbei and Neptune, if the Poneglyph got stolen, the road Poneglyph, they would say something, right? They, like there, there would be like a Code Red situation by now. Like Jinbei especially, being part of the crew, would be like, hey, you know, you what, you know, hey, you guys should know that this final road Poneglyph we're looking for, um, you know, got taken a while ago. I mean, like, Yorkie could have befriended Whitebeard or the Fishmen. Like, the person has to be friends with Whitebeard or the Fishmen. And one of the two, probably both, to take the Poneglyph without causing a ruckus. It was moved in between Roger's death. This is why I think Mass Deuce is the answer. It's strictly this argument. is like, it has to be someone close to Whitebeard who's still alive that's close to Whitebeard. You think Mass Deuce is the man marked by flames? Yes, sir. Because he's got a spade pirates tattoo. Well, <laughs> well, I actually hope he has an ASCE tattoo, but yeah. reversed. Yeah. yeah, but but it's because he also has a flame dial. So also, here's some important thing. This is like maybe the most important evidence for me. In the Ace novel, he built the striker from scratch, right? Like they were like trapped on the island. He just because he's just a, such a smart dude. Oh, and, he's smart. <laughs> and he uh, and he basically when they're building the ship, he's literally like, hey, if you char the wood. It'll be stronger. 
So like make the wood black for the ship. Like if you char it in fire, like there's literally like at least in the Boichi version, you like literally throw it in front of the fire and he has like a plank. So the man marked by flame ship is black. So what if he charred the whole ship because he knows it's stronger that way, right? Because like he wanted to have a strong, and it also it would just look badass that way. But but then also t- going back to the flame dial that he had, because remember he he built the turbine thing in the striker that used Ace's fire, so he was able to like build propulsion on a ship using fire, right? He's like, if I have infinite fire, I can make propulsion. However, you know, we can get around as much as you want. So going back to the whirlpool on the ship, he still has that flame dial and it has like, like unlimited fire pretty much. Like he uses it to, he uses the striker now to go around using the flame dial. Like we saw at the end of the the Boichi version, which, you know, that, that part wasn't in the ACE novel specifically where we see him ride out with the, the, like with the flame dial and the striker, but you know, the rest of it's, you know, in the Ace novels, but basically, um, so what if he uses that? What if, like, in the ship that's the man marked by flame ship, he has like a special turbine in the bottom using the flame dial that's making the whirlpools? Because he can already make, he already built from scratch the striker pushing, you know, force backwards to make the ship go. If he just puts it, pushes it downward, it would be creating like a vortex or something. That that part is like, you know, a little bit sticky, but it's like the, uh, the burning of the ship part makes sense. And also in the, the last thing he said was like, I want to follow Sabo and Luffy. Like I want to like report on them only to Morgans. So he's been like following them for two years. Cause we saw him at Sphinx. Hmm. And he was also friends with Whitebeard, like Whitebeard literally, um, like he was one of their doctors and when ace so when 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 Whitebeard got burnt by ace a burn scar you could say in his 99th battle he got burnt and he went right to deuce for treatment he went specifically to do he never got treated by deuce before that and right after the 99th battle and he got a burn scar he went and only and it was only him and deuce in the room and like we didn't obviously hear about the man marked by flames but i guess the idea is like he trusted deuce a little bit like it seemed that way like he called him doc and Deuce is like, I'm not a doctor. Please don't call me that. Like, I failed medical school. No, he's like, no, Doc. I just, I just don't know if Oda is going to make Deuce that big of a character. Because it's like, Deuce isn't really in the manga at all. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you don't know who this character is if you're casual. He might be using this to sell the novels. Have, have Shank show up at the end of Wano for Film Red. Have Mass Du show up right when the uh, they're 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 selling the Boichi version of that manga in an omnibus thing now. Yeah, I I like it. I just I don't know. But the uh, chat is saying that Den Den Kushi has a Yorkie being the man marked by flames video. Oh, shout out to him. Yeah. Great, great theorist. Um, that's crazy. Um, because I definitely just had the like the the spark of the thought here. So anybody saying I've, I have not seen the video, but uh, yeah, these these are all original. Similar, similar lines of thinking here for sure. Yeah, Den Den got some great uh, theories, so definitely check him out. And the last arc, which he's a part of, and Three Day, and plenty of other people. Um. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Mass Deuce is my that's that's been my my go to since since I read the Boichi version and I saw him with the flame dot because also what's the burn scar of it? I mean he's with Ace the whole time. Like he ate half of the Marimara no me. Like he could just have a tattoo. There's like so many things that could be like what if under his jacket he just got burnt in an argument with Ace one time or something, you know? Like I don't know. I like that, but um, I don't know. I like this. Um, uh, uh, I like this Yorkie idea. Now that might be my that might be my new top. Um, I like the Yorkie being Luffy's grandpa. Yeah, the maternal grandpa. Yeah, I like that. But a lot. it's like if we're going to have the man marked by flames be uh, another character, like it's got to be someone like deeply connected to Luffy. And Mass Deuce could do that. But Yorkie would be so much better for, uh, like, it, it would be it would be good for Brooke. It would be good for Luffy, if it's the case that I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and yeah, it's deep before. And well, the thing with mass dues, I guess, like the deeper level, if I were to go just outside of the pure evidence or whatever, you know, what I view as evidence at least, you know, the the deeper like emotional layer there is that it's Ace and Whitebeard helping Luffy from beyond the grave, essentially, because it would it's probably a plan from Whitebeard. It's not just Mass Deuce operating on his own. It was probably like here's here's the, here's the the basically the steps that I think happened. So going back to the Whitebeard and Fishmen part, where Whitebeard uh, like Whitebeard held the territory for all that time, and like if the Ponyglyph was taken, he would have brought hell on whoever took it. You know what I'm saying? Because like it's his friends for one thing, so he would do that for whatever. But like. I mean, even though he didn't want the One Piece, I'm sure he knew those Pony Glyphs were important. Like, he knew Roger needed him, needed Odin. And so, basically, um, somebody that he knows and likes and trusts, he probably made a plan like, hey, you need to go move this because if I die here in Marineford, we're cooked. Like, I, somebody's going to go down and take it immediately, and that would be why after would Black... Person, but why would that person be Deuce and not, like, Marco or Jozu? Too, too obvious for Blackbeard. So, Blackbeard, I think he's the one who necessitated moving the Pony Glyph. So I think when Blackbeard betrayed, because Blackbeard, so Jinbei has mentioned this, and I think someone else has mentioned this before too, where Blackbeard had like intimate knowledge of Whitebeard's territories is the way that it was put. So like he would have known that in Fishman Island that road Poneglyph was there. So I think what happened is when Blackbeard betrayed the crew, Whitebeard was like, okay, well, first order business, we got to move this because Blackbeard's going to go take it. He knows it's there. And he's also like, the fishmen probably still think he's a part of my crew right now. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we got to go move that because I might die in Marine Ford. You know, like if I'm dead, you know, and now you go back to Bakken, who's looking for Whitebeard's inheritance. Is that, was that, did he hide? Is that part of what she's looking, does she think he hid it at Sphinx Island? And where did we last see Mass Deuce? Sphinx Island. So, you know, it's, so it's like the idea that like Mass, and Mass Deuce would have been picked because if he picked Marco or Josie or whatever, and Blackbeard like doesn't see, like go back, go to the payback war, for example, because it was already moved by that point. Right. It was like because Big Mom would have taken it at the beginning of the time skip if, you know, whenever she took over, if it was still there. So like by the payback war, if like he's fighting him and one of them isn't there or something, because he knew about the man marked by flames a year ago. Right. He knew about it like oh, half. We don't know exactly when, but whenever he got out Kiji or Kuzan, because um, that's when he mentioned it. So it's like that was already a thing in the world by then. But if he saw, but I think payback war happened before that. But regardless if he does that war and one of them's missing and then he's like, oh, this, the pony lift from Fishman Island is gone somewhere. Well, he, I guess he doesn't know if it's the Zoe one or the Fishman Island one, but it's like if one of them was missing from that war, just missing from the world in general, he couldn't get intel on him. It's like, well, that's probably who it is. But like Mass Deuce is like a random guy. You know what I mean? Like he's important. He's more important to us than he is to Whitebeard's crew because that he was like, he only joined by association with Ace. Like nobody even knew who he was. So... It would just be like a plan where Whitebeard's like, all right, I need someone to move this and watch and like take care of it and watch it. And Mass Deuce, like Deuce is really smart. He's really trustworthy. Cause like I said, with like the, the scar thing, like when Whitebeard got a burn scar, he went to Mass Deuce. And so it's like, that was the only guy he could probably trust that also wasn't a top tier commander. Cause it could also be like, Hey, you know, you're carrying Ace's will to a degree you should be the one it's like not that he would have known this back then but like especially with luffy now it would be such a beautiful thing where it's like Whitebeard kind of noticed that luffy was important so if you were able to you know pass that on like i'm going to help luffy from beyond the grave like ace and Whitebeard both because mass deuce is the only person at the epicenter of both of those things like you could say the other Whitebeard pirates pirates are but mass deuce is way more closely related to ace and Whitebeard's like the only Whitebeard pirate that he like really associated with like he talked to like i think thatch a couple times but so like maybe whitebeard went down took it right or he ordered someone to go move it right before his death told the fishman like hey uh we're moving this for precautionary purposes don't tell anyone that we took it like you know because that's why because J- jimbe and neptune should have said something if it was stolen yeah uh i don't know i mean i, I think it, i think it would be cool I'm like I'm I'm totally I'm totally okay with it, you know, whichever way it, it ends up being. Uh, and I think that there's like a fun element to it if it is deuce. Like I could see the panel where it's you know like, hey, I'm Ace's best friend. Mm-hmm. Um or something like that. Like that's that's neat. 
but um he, he's also just like someone that could have been missing from the world for a few years and nobody would be asking questions you know what i'm saying because it seems like the man marked by flames is just riding on a ship all the time you know making whirlpools it's like who's gonna make a black ship who's gonna be removed from the world doing this without anyone being like Oh, it's got to be this person because we haven't seen them in this long. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like that. That's why Yorkie, like, kind of makes sense is because that's not someone anybody would be expecting to see. Right. You know, like Every, that. The, 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 that's, that's that's the the cool part about it is it it's a character that, um, ninety nine point nine 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 um percent of fans think is dead. Yeah. So. Exactly. And like that's why like when the when like some ideas come up like Dragon being the man marked by flames or something I'm like I mean Dragon's been doing we see him at Kamabaka he's been doing stuff like it wouldn't really make sense for him to be out there right. And also like Dragon doesn't Dragon's got to do other important stuff. Dragon's got a lot of stuff to do <laughs> other than that, you know? I, I mean I wanted it to be Saul. That was the yeah. cleanest thing for me. Like I really wanted it to, to be Saul. I wanted it to like maintain being Saul because that that just felt clean to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like here's this dude. He's called you know that he's marked by flames, but it's really just ice burns. You know, right. and then it's it's a story relevance for a character that we thought was dead but isn't, and um, you kind of get the same effect if it's if it's Yorkie. It's like it's the mm -hmm. same, but it's different. But yeah. The, the big part to me is just how they got a hold of it. That's like where the mystery has to start. And that's why Mass Deuce is the cleanest answer for that for me. But like that's 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 the every time someone brings up a theory, that's the first thing I say is like, well, how did they get it? Because it's like that since it's the Fishman Island one, given the important ties to Whitebeard and good people in general, you know. The man marked by flames is uh Blamenko. <laughs> he just put it inside his pocket dementia. <laughs> That, I, have you heard the theory that Usopp gets that fruit? Uh, well, that was... Oda said that that is a fruit that, yeah. that Usopp would have. Exactly. Because yeah. he'd just be able to pull out his bag of tricks. It's not something that would mm -hmm. actually like increase his power. It would just give him access to tools that he already built right. or found. Because he already does the... Uh, yeah, like the... Because isn't like the pocket dimension like a thing in... Like cartoons or whatever, because like people just pull giant things out. Of it. So like exactly that. I really, I, I still wanted him to get Conjuro's fruit because he's a good artist. So yeah. he would have been able to make some interesting things. Yeah, I, I'm big on the uh, Kabuto getting a fruit. Yeah. You know, like you couldn't give it Conjuro's fruit, which I think would be the perfect matchup because like it would turn into a paintbrush, and also like you could even have ink just maybe pop in as bullets in the bag, like infinite ammo, just but. I mean, honestly, though, now that we see what green blood is, I mean, what if Vegapunk can just have green blood coursing through the thing? Like, I don't know how that would work, but maybe he'll find a way. I don't know, but I mean, I'm 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 here for that either way. I think before anything, the Straw Hats really should learn hockey. Please. <laughs> At least one of the two types. You know what I mean? Or, well, three. I mean, you know, I doubt... We don't have to get this, into this whole discussion, but I don't know how many Straw Hats will end up with Conqueror's Hockey, but they should all have armament and observation by yeah. the end, you know? Yeah. Are and you a Sanji Conqueror's guy? Uh, Sanji? Yeah. Could have it. Uh, I think that it's... Usopp is number one. Yep. Uh, then then Sanji. Agreed. Um, and then Nami. I'm with that, too. Um, but I, I, I think I cut off the list there, personally. That's like... like I'll put it this way. If anyone more than them get it, then they should all just get it. Yeah. Um, Buggy should get it. Kobe yeah. should get it. He may already. Yeah. yeah. Um, Helmeppo? Ha, no. I, I'm, Helmeppo's going to get uh, two black blades. That's what he's. That's, that's going to be his feat. When he, when he beats Zoro? Yeah. <laughs> When he beats Mihawk, and then Zoro beats him. I, I, I unironically though, I think a cool matchup to happen. Of, like Helmeppo should lose this, but I one matchup I would love to see is Helmeppo versus Vista. 
just because Vista, you know, Marine Ford toxicity with with Mihawk and everything, and also I think they both, yeah, he uses two swords, right? Vista, yeah, yeah. yeah so like both of them just the two swords. I don't know why they'd fight though. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know about anybody else. Uh, crocodile, please. That's, you know, I need my goat to have it. Um, shout out to Double O Flevins, supered and said, uh, "It's sad when you think about Bakin hunting for Whitebeard's treasure when it was his family." The whole time something weevil and bakin don't really have boom love that I, i'm big on the so is it pronounced bakin or is, like i don't know because people always yell at me for not saying miss buckingham and i don't even know um i mean if you're gonna say bakin then i think it should be bakin i don't think it's bakin yeah um but um but i don't know old stussy yeah, but then but, at the same time, is it Stussy? You know, it's yeah. you know, is it is it Marijoa? Is it Marie Joie? Yeah, is it Mary it, Joyce? Like, it, mm -hmm. there's there's so there's so many things. Yeah, like, like for me, I think a big thing is like sometimes I like pronouncing it the way they do in the sub. You know what I'm saying? Where right. like like right. And, uh, like, like, like for instance, like Lucy and Dressrosa, I always say Lucy because that's how they say it, right? Lucy! Yeah, I always say it that way because that's just, in my mind, that's like the first sound I think of. But but, uh, but about Miss Buckingham, you know, whatever her name is, um, I'm actually, I'm a, I have like, I wouldn't say I have full theories on her exactly, but I think she is way more relevant than we uh, give her credit for because, for one thing, like the treasure stuff, that could be the Poneglyph, maybe, like that's kind of a cool thing. But really, the the Weevil stuff, because she said that Vegapunk was the only man who could... Well, not only man, but she, like Vegapunk is the man who can prove this is Whitebeard's kid. And now Vegapunk's dead. And so how does that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I still want to see Impel Down 2.0 now that we have mm -hmm. context of Marco and um, Bakin, like needing to like get Weevil out. But the thing is, is the last thing they talk about is Vegapunk. So it's like, are they coming to Egghead? Or are they going to impel down straight away? I, I'm actually cooking a video on this, but I'm more than happy to talk about it. Where I think what's going to happen is they're going to stay there because Marco probably wants proof that that's Whitebeard's kid. You know what I'm saying? I think that's one. Th I don't, like, I don't think he's going to go on a whim. You know, like, I think he wants some kind of... That's why they say the Vegapunk thing. You know, like, they're going to have to talk about it first. So what I think is going to happen is we're maybe when we leave Egghead, we're going to just stop at Sphinx really quickly. Because it's near Elbaf. Because remember, uh, Shanks dropping off Marco. Like, on the way, they're going to drop me off or whatever. So we know Sphinx is really close to Elbaf. So what if they stop there briefly? They might, like... It, like Because they we know the log pose isn't pointing there, so I'm not sure how they would end up there exactly. But they might take a pit stop there, see Ace's grave, which I think would be something that should have happened. Like, should definitely happen. That's what so, I wanted to happen after Wano. Yeah. Like, that, that should happen next. Because then right before they go to Elbaf, which, like, I think is going to be... The starter of the final war basically like after that we're pretty much in the the legit we're already in the end game but that's like the end end game like we're, we're talking government fighting lodestar raft tail craft laugh tail got you one of them i um while you were talking like i've been saying that uh, you know my top choice is like the grand fleet goes and uh you know does impel down 2.0 mm-hmm but um, and I, I would love it if like Law ended up there like while he was sailing away like he got caught and yeah. then it's like it's a thing where Law becomes one of the protagonists of Impel Down 2.0. Okay. But now you know just thinking about Marco going there like if he did go there like what if we got like a, uh, a heist movie scenario where Marco's actually like going around. And just like he did with Izo, he's like, I'm putting together a crew. Yeah. And then to the actual inversion is not that extensions of Luffy are doing Impel Down 2.0, but it's actually the reverse of Blackbeard exactly. invading and the Whitebeard pirates yeah. go in and this is the family yeah. that, it, that Weevil is looking for. This is the treasure. You wanted the treasure? It, Here it is. And remember, with Marine Ford and Impel Down the first time, what was the whole reason Luffy broke an Impel Down? 
to save Whitebeard's son, technically speaking. Now they're going to break back in and save Whitebeard's real son. Cook. That's, that that actually that I I want it to be the Grand Fleet, but that might be what it actually is. Yeah, I think I, and and also like not that I want Marco to die or anyone from the Whitebeard Pirates to die. But I think this could be a reasonable place for that to happen. It's like some of them, you know what I mean? Don't, like, don't make it out, like, because they're they're because think about it. Like, Whitebeard died trying to save his son. If Whitebeard's sons die saving his real son, that's like another layer to it. Like, they, they all don't have to. But yeah, it's like Marco's pulling up, and it's just like, hey, so you know, we failed one son. Let's not let that happen. Again. Exactly. Yes. And then in the process, Do Flamingo gets out, and all these other people. The thumbnail is literally half Marco's face, half Do Flamingo's face, because it's going to be Marco going to save Weevil. But that's going to be how Do Flamingo, Do Flamingo, because we already know Do Flamingo and Crocodile parallel a million different ways, right? Well, if he goes down to level six, and they're like tr- trying to talk about how to get out, and you hear that that laugh, you know, and then <laughs> yeah, I can help you guys get out. Just let let me out of here. And it's the same thing as Croc. That's exactly what happened with Croc. So she booted in a Marco. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, wouldn't that I can just see the scene now. Ichiban Taicho. <laughs> <laughs> and then also Mr. Two. Bon Clay. Bon Clay yeah, exactly. We gotta get him out. Like, gotta, gotta get him. And, and everyone thinks, you know, Doflamingo's gonna join Cross Guild or should, because the, the Warlord parallel. Well, Mr. Two even he needs to even more so, in my opinion, because they already have Mr. Zero, one and three, right? I'd love that. So I'd love that. Yeah. That's a video right there. Oh, it's coming. Um, wow. <laughs> I, and one other thing we didn't say is also, uh, well, I mentioned it earlier with Queen, but when it, before we started the stream, but we're going to get Skinny Weevil. He's going to look like Whitebeard. Remember how, remember how there was that oh. panel where he was looking like in a mirror? He's like, hey, that's Pops. But it, like he doesn't look anything like it's just the mustache. But that, that's interesting. But the thing is, is that skinny Rizo didn't take. Didn't take what he like. He didn't like. We didn't get. We got you, you know Rizo got the suck. Yeah. And then the next time we saw Rizo, he was still, he was, a, he was still Rizo. So it's like the the Green Bull thing only applies if you're a woman. Oh, you think so? Uh, yeah, because this is a shonen. Well, I'm thinking. Can, since Queen specifically said, if I was too skinny, or if I was skinny, I'd be too popular, and he got the suck. I, I, I think. But it's, I think if we saw Queen again, he would not still be skinny. I think it's just that Rizo wasn't uh, large enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that's. I think that's the idea. There is it's like liposuction essentially. I think that's the idea. We'll see. And we will. I mean, we'll see. It's interesting. Yeah, because I just. Uh, there's some fan art of Skinny Weevil, I've and it's amazing. It. I've never seen it. Oh, you should. It's amazing. Yeah. I actually just got it. Where at? There's, there's so many Third figures. shelf. What's that? Uh, third One, shelf two, next three. to Crack. Oh, right here. Oh, wow. That's a nice one, man. The Road Poneglyph, though. Yeah. That, that one's... That, that, yeah. That's with yeah. the moss on it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I got, I got the Yonko there. Luffy on top of Buggy. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have Crocodile there because he's the real Yonko. Yeah, but... well, he's right over here on the, the eternal pose. Yeah, yeah. I had to elevate him. Um, shout out to Old Greenies who said, Stussy Triple Cross. Who else is coming to Egghead? I know you, Captain, so tell me. Uh, just caught up. Love the streams. My uh, dream is to call in one day. Uh, I mean, that could be an interesting like thing to do is like, do a uh, like a I, I don't know how I would set it up, but like a call in thing would be. I don't know how you would eat. I mean, like a call in would be like you could at least do like a Discord thing where like yeah, you probably only allow it probably, people. Yeah, it'd probably have to be like a Discord thing. But that's cool. Uh, um, it'd probably be like members only. Um, sorry everybody. But who else is coming to Egghead? Um, Stussy Triple Cross, I want because it, going back to the stuff we were talking about, about like CP0 being slaves and, and all of that, like I would rather Stussy, especially with her power set, mm-hmm. being evil because it's a it's a way more menacing to ha- have it in our heads that that's coming after us rather than on our side because um, it's something uh, that could incapacitate Luffy at any moment. So it's like, 
imagine a scenario where she wakes up and then, uh, you know, proffers Luffy to the Gorosei by, like, biting his neck in the middle of a moment, and then, like, they teleport away with him. I like... So, well, do you think Stussy... Do you think Stussy has a devil fruit, or that it's, like, biological? Like, it's, like, her race? Or, like, some lineage, just some um, That's interesting. Cloning? I think that the clone has a devil fruit. I think that it's... Okay. It, it's probably some sort of bat fruit or okay. um i don't know i mean unlimited well, world red the video game already had like a vampire devil fruit type thing okay so if that's another situation right. where like the movies are coming around if oda like you know like gave that idea and mm -hmm. then was like oh wait actually i'm gonna well, use that well th going back to this triple cross because i i don't think it's a devil fruit but that's not like a big time agenda that's just like if i had to guess it's not but if it is a devil fruit so going back to how luchi and kaku awakened from between CP9 and CP0, like, it's almost like maybe they were, like, given the awakening successfully by virtue of agreeing to be in CP0 or something to that degree. Well, tying into that, what if Stussy's triple cross isn't necessarily that she, like, willingly triple crosses, but that her fruit awakens and the Gorosei or whatever, if they can, like, make the awakening be controlled or not, maybe, like, they make it so she can't control it. And so then she goes like on a ramp. So like, because comparing it to the other two, like Luchi and Kaku, there they do listen. So they got controlled awakenings. And if she gets an uncontrollable one, and we get like a true, because like we have the Jailer Beast as an example, but that's like, you know, that, it'd be cool to get another one, <laughs> you know. And so seeing her go on a rampage, like awakened as like, you know, like they trigger, like the Gorsei trigger it or something. I don't know, man. There's a lot of good, a lot of places that could go. Because I want her to get a punishment for disobeying you yeah know what i mean like that has to happen or um because there's a uh the, the, I, I still go back to the tomate baco she was at whole cake to get the box which had pills originally that made hody look like luffy mm -hmm. uh like gear five yep. and su long form so it's like if she is I would rather, instead of her like getting reprimanded, I would rather her have a secret agenda that is tied to Gear 5 and Nika, that is, is tied to the Gorosei, and like that, that she has triple-crossed everyone, and she is actually trying to kidnap Luffy for the world government so that they can experiment him and eliminate either eliminate Nika or figure out how to harness that power. Um, because we've already established that she was looking for something that gives you that power. And... and Connecting to that even more, what I think is super interesting uh, is that she did that when Dufeld was getting the box, and Dufeld founded Mads essentially, right? He paid he's, he paid the bills, which is basically founding, you know, he's like so his whole project. So you tie the two together, it's like, you know, Stussy is like a result of Dufeld. Is that the that's the idea, right? right? Like Dufeld funded how she exists, and so then tying those two together, like there's. I don't know what like what you're saying makes a lot of sense, and I think Why that, that is she could be. Why she aligned to Vegapunk if she would kill Dufeld? Yeah, ex there, there you go. It's like what is the real agenda here? Because, like, I mean, she's listening to Vegapunk, but killing Dufeld. But you know, it's like what is how does that work? Um, and also, I don't know if you heard the theory that Croc and Dufeld are related, but I like that theory. Uh, I've talked about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I what I actually think, and this ties into the thing I was talking about earlier about Croc being. Uh, I talked about it earlier because okay. it's um, in terms of the idea of Croc being involved in God Valley is that's in the West Blue. Dufeld is, I don't know if he's confirmed from the West Blue, but his Mafia vibe gives off West Blue because we yeah. know Get beige. Yep. that the Mafia is like all there. So it's like if Crocodile spent time in the West Blue came up through the mafia like of West Blue and through that, you know, through Dufeld, all of that work, different things, learned about all of the stuff that he has intimate knowledge of that most people don't know because of these things, and maybe even through Dufeld who had connections to Mads. Yeah. Then while in the West Blue, he meets Nico Robin, who is also going around from shady organizations in the West Blue. And 
2018. Love that. And then, you know, it's like, I think it all stems from the West Blue. I think it stems from these mafia families. I think Dufeld and Crocodile have to be connected. It may not be that that's his dad or that it's something else or whatever, but it might be. The, he's the, he's his shanks. He, exactly. He's he's the he's the surrogate father that that stepped up. You know, the one that like put his arm around him and was like, "Here, this is how you drip." Okay. <laughs> Always make sure that you've got a big ass coat, son. Yeah. All right? That's it. If you ever get locked up, make sure when you break out, you go and find your coat immediately. immediately yeah. yeah. You, you don't, don't go out with the prison, prison clothes on. <laughs> like, stay in prison then. <laughs> which actually. Oh, dude, that's such a crazy connection going back to cover stories. In Miss Golden Week's cover story, they basically have an opportunity for all the broke works to escape from prison. But Croc's like, no, I'd rather stay here or something like that. Because I think he knows he would get caught again or something, given the situation. And then Miss Golden Week makes a rainbow, a circular rainbow in the sky and gives everyone the outfits they like most, like outfits that tie to what they desire most. And Croc gets the Pirate King outfit. And he's like mad about it because he gave up on that dream. You know what I'm saying? The Mr. One's over there with like a hero outfit and he has a little smile. Um, but it's like just tying back to that, it's like, um, I don't know, like Croc, like with the, the drip part, it's like he literally didn't want to get out of prison in that cover story. Maybe, well, until he changed his clothes. And what does Miss Golden Week do? Changes his clothes, you know? And then he gets out, like, well, then, they, I mean, they get caught again, but some of them, Croc does. It may literally just be like, I'm going to stay here because I'm, no one's going to see me in these stripes. <laughs> um, it could be that. Or if Crocodile at one point was a slave, like it may be like, you know, oh, he some, hates wearing those. Some sort of trauma of that because he doesn't want to be, you know, seen, seen with that. Something like that. I don't know. Damn. I like that. Um, I could talk about Croc all day. You know that. Oh, same. I mean, but, um, we should probably start wrapping yeah. things up here at, at, the, at the next Croc Summit, or you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. we, we can talk about Croc there. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm. I'm. You know, it's like we did talk about um, um, Cross Kill Davy back and all that when when we were collabing, and the video is finally out. Yeah. It only took me how many months <laughs> or years um, at that point, but um, no, I appreciate That's... you know um, you gave some input. On that, especially oh, the, uh, the the thumbnail. Yeah, well, if you do that, uh, the Yorkie one, hit me up. That's that's, that's good. That, that, that that can be a really good video. Like that, that can pop off. Yeah. Um. Or are you are you going to the the buggy bash? Uh, I was invited. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I saw mention it. I was like, well, are you gonna are you gonna be there? Uh, that's I, definitely the croc. We can talk about croc there. Yeah. Quite a bit. Well, I'm doing the agenda reverie tomorrow, true. Which is at on Jay's channel. So tune into JD Legend tomorrow for the agenda reverie. There's going to be some nonsense happening. <laughs> some agendas. Oh yeah, agendas will be pushed. Yeah. When, when when Blackbeard in chapter what was it 1081? I think when he was like, "Oh no, Kuzan, you got pirates all wrong. We're not just." buddies chumming around we all profit off our own agendas that's like what it the literal word they use in the tcb i was like jay's got to be smiling somewhere right now yeah yeah i think i saw a short that he made with that and there's just like see <laughs> see you know um but uh what agenda are you pushing barry barry wants to know and so do i uh I mean, I'm just going to freestyle. I'm going to see, okay. you know, where we, I mean, you know, I've got my own agendas and, and all that. I mean, we, 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 we've talked about it here. Got you. I didn't know if you were going to go in with guns blazing about like one. Um, no, nah, I mean, I'll, I'll be low key and I'll come in when I, when I need to. Yeah. When, you, when it's time to cook. Yeah, exactly. When the fire is at its hottest, start cooking. Exactly. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I try to stay reasonable. That's good. Um, but uh, the alabast agenda. I I mean, the the main agenda is just Vivi's coming back, and it's going to be important. Um, yeah. The most important, and in- I don't know if I have any like 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 super like wacky things that aren't like theories. Like I don't have agendas that are like like Mihawk is stronger than Shanks, you know? And like yeah. I'm like like that's my. 
that's my agenda. Even though, like, Just, well, yeah, Mihawk is the world's strongest swordsman, so at the very least, like, he is a better swordsman than Shanks. Mm-hmm. But it may not mean that he is actually stronger physically. Yeah, uh, I, and you know, it's I, like it's stupid yeah. things like that. And also, not not to get into that whole debate, but something I've been pushing is, you know how in the Battleship bag sequence, they talked about, like, don't use hockey. Like, you're, you're training physically. Like, you're not... You don't use hockey on the, the ships, right? Like, you gotta get stronger just with your fists. Yeah. I think that swordsman thing comes down to, like, who's better without hockey and who's better with it? Because, like, when you start using hockey, it's, like, totally different ball. Or maybe, like, conquers hockey, you know what I'm saying? Or something. Because, like, I'm sure Shanks, when you fold that in, you know, that's what makes him so strong. But, like... Mihawk might just be better just purely physically with the sword. You know what I'm saying? Like if they were to fight with no hockey, he would win. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe my new agenda is the is magic piece. I like that. Um Soon said, uh, saw Randy and the OPLA season two Jacob sneak peek video. Yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh that wasn't me. That was uh that that was uh Jacob here and then me here. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, they put Jacob's face on everybody in that photo. Mm-hmm. Which is um, awesome. That video was great. Especially yeah. the ending of it. Oh, yeah. I, I need a green screen of, of Matt busting through the door. <laughs> uh, Anytime uh, someone asks you about season two, that's that's the thing. Like He's, he's here to stop them. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, let's... Um, uh, ooh, ooh wrap things up here uh this was cool. awesome thank you uh dak for coming thank you for dropping invi- by thank you for inviting me i mean you know only only a few thousand miles or a thousand a few hundred miles whatever it is um but i'm happy to be here and thank you for inviting me into your your home to do this i'm honored to be the first one to be in person for this well yeah i mean you said you were coming to to la and i mean it it worked out that like even when it wasn't this break it was going to be a break mm-hmm. so it was like well all right it's not gonna be a chapter so let's mm-hmm. you know let's do a let's do a real theory for theory here i mean oda oda gave us three whole weeks to get this done you know he's like i know you guys are planning this i'll, I'll take three weeks off let you guys meet up um and i love that apparently morge teching and roger all streamed at the same time that we were streaming <laughs> it's like that's, we, that's we a, picked we picked the perfect time yeah but, but i mean we still had i i saw the chart at one point like a few hundred people here a couple hundred people most yeah. of the time so that's amazing major shout out to you guys and thank you guys for uh dealing with my loud voice that uh has caused some reverb so thank you for the technical difficulty uh patience yeah i, I hope my Sorry. muting helped a little bit if uh you know I'll, I'll go back and listen to the audio when this is all done and Try and figure out ways to make this better in the future. Um, shout out to Double O Flevens, uh, supered and said uh, possibility of the apex of reaching Laugh being broadcasted by Buggy's entourage. This time, the revolution will be televised. Um, great reference. Uh, Buggy is going to be involved in Laugh no matter what. Agreed. It's it, like I, there's there's few things in in One Piece that I can say are like absolute guarantees. You know, it's like L- Luffy and, and Shanks will meet. Uh, Zoro and Mihawk will fight. Buggy will be at Laugh Tale is is one of those things. Mm-hmm. Like he was the he's the second Devil Fruit user. He was the first real villain. Um, he is Oda's favorite character. He'll be there. Yeah, and the only thing I would add is I think it would be best if like the straw hats could get there and we could have like a chapter or two of just them getting to bask and like the excitement and then buggy like you're talking about like being broadcasted then maybe buggy's entourage can come in right after that and start showing it but like i definitely want to have at least a chapter to just sit in the the insane peakness that is the crew finally getting there but then i do think right after we have that sentimental moment then buggy's just going to come in and just you know make it a whole thing Yep, and then the world will th- will think for about five minutes that he's the new pirate king. Yep. Um, and it, 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 we're either gonna get one or one of these two things. We're gonna get either Buggy being misinterpreted as the pirate king for at least a, a moment, or we're going to see Buggy accidentally sit on the Iron Throne. Yep. Like it's gonna be like it's, it's one of those things is gonna happen because it's just it's the epitome of 
everything that Buggy has been failing upwards towards. Yes, sitting on the throne. That's I love that theory. I think I've seen some fan art of that also. Um, oh my god, he's literally there. That's that's so peak. Um, and the the one thing that I think is going to happen for sure is that well, so Buggy told Luffy in chapter like seventeen. Well, if you're going to be king of the pirates, I'm going to be god of the pirates. Right. And so that's like a title that doesn't really exist yet. So like, I think that is going to happen. So that's one way that it could happen. But I also think if Luffy becomes Pirate King and then everyone sees Buggy kill him, quote unquote, because, you know, maybe Chop Chop Awakening can help out. Then they're going to be like, oh, he killed the Pirate King. He's the Pirate God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then Luffy will still be alive, you know. But Right. Uh, Vasil Vladivanovici uh, super and said, what if at Laftel, Buggy's last order as a captain in the series will be men protect Straw Hat Luffy? Oh, like he becomes the white beard like that. Like <laughs> make sure that boy doesn't die. Like <laughs> Galdino. <protect> <laughs> <laughs> Which, Which honestly, he's, he's done, done it so many times did. already. Yeah. yeah. Might yeah. as well. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, he says it to Mihawk or Crocodile and they like take his order. <sighs> That, that would actually because in marine, marine ford, ford they were you know croc and mihawk were already involved like trying well croc didn't want to kill luffy but he was going after whitebeard and mihawk was trying to kill luffy you know for parts of it so then having them flip it where they're both entirely that would actually be like in insane character development for buggy like it because you have this thing where croc and mihawk don't respect buggy but if this is buggy tapping into the innate power that he always had but lied dormant after roger died like, what if there was something that Roger really saw in Bucky for the future or something, but he just like, you know, and Shanks knew it too, but Bucky just became, you know, like he gave into the sloth of it all. Uh, but now that he know he wants to be the Pirate King and he wants to get the One Piece, like now he has that ability to, to bring people to him. Yep. And then he, he gives out orders to Crocodile and Mihawk and they listen. And, and, you know, that, that ability that you're talking about, you know, Luffy also has it to, like, get everyone on his side or whatever. That's what and, and who told us? Mihawk. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's, so in that situation, it should be Mihawk. Um, Mihawk's like, Buggy has it, too. Because <laughs> Mihawk has never saved Luffy, but Crocodile has. So it would, I think it would mean more if Mihawk did it, probably. I agree with that. Cause, and it also might be a thing, like, you know, not disrespecting Croc, because I love Croc, but it might be also a... a a strength thing or like a swordsmanship. Like maybe there's a giant thing coming and Mihawk has to slice it in half to save, like, you know, something that would be harder for Croc to do. You know what I'm saying? Some kind of like necessitation thing to get Mihawk over there. I love that. Big fan. Yeah. Um, Double O Flevin said, who better to, uh, than to lead a uh, Joy Boys world than a clown? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then to wrap things up, any, um, uh, Final thoughts on where you think Egghead is going? Uh, my big agenda for the end of Egghead is that the way we're going to escape is Dorian Brogy uh, doing another Hokoku sovereignty to send us flying like he did through the goldfish. I want him to send like them to because we want the first boost, right? Like we were supposed to use the Vega Force to get like a certain distance away. So I want them to recreate it and send us flying. And so then that's how we get out. And then they're going to be stuck behind. And Usopp was like, Oh, Dorian Brogy, I thought I thought we weren't going to see you guys in Elbath. Well, he's not. Woof. Uh, yeah, the Cuda burst isn't working, guys. We can't go. We don't have the we don't have the cola or whatever. It's like mm, we got gotcha. you. Yeah, like, and also I think what this this is a little wacky, but how he they sent us through a giant goldfish. What if like Emu pops up and is a giant? sea creature of some kind and we get sent through emu or it doesn't have to be emu it could be who you know something else but like how they sent us through a goldfish is send us through something a giant whale i mean i love whales too much so that'd be an evil whale i don't know where that would come from but something huge that's a it's sea related it's gonna be crazy either way um mm -hmm. anything you want people to check out that's out already or to uh, look out for in the future um I would say I got a couple of videos cooking. So, you know, we talked about Impel Down earlier. I got a video on that coming. I got a video on uh, Sanji fighting Kuzan coming, which I know is going to be a hot topic, but mostly talk about Kuzan's character for a lot of it, what his plans are. So if you like those. Also, Why Blackbeard Doesn't Sleep, that's also coming out in two weeks. So if any of those interest you, definitely go subscribe. I'm also dropping shorts like every couple days now. So if you like those too, I got those. So um, other than that, all you got to do is make sure you go sub to Randy. Uh, 
like and subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. <laughs> and uh, sub to to Dak here is uh, his info is in the description. Um, drop W's in the chat for our guest. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the first live in-person theory for theory party style. Um, and I did. Me too. This was fun. This was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we'll be doing uh, JJK Zero on Twitch uh, sometime this week. Uh, we may or may not stream on Sunday since we did this. Um, if you have ideas on what we should do on Sunday, put them in the Discord. Um, I don't think I'll, you know, try and do two theory for theories like back to back so soon. But um, you know, we get something something else that could be fun for Sunday. Uh, put it in the Discord. Put it in the comments. Uh, leave a comment on this video so it moves up in the algorithm. Leave the likes yes. so people see this, so they see the cook fest. Um, the, the likes go a long way, guys. I'm like, I'm serious. I've I've seen it happen where like you do a like spike, and and, and it happens for the vods too. Like if you do if you do the likes right now, that vod's gonna get pushed like twice as hard. You know what I'm saying? Because the algorithm knows. So it does make a big difference. But you guys watching was also great. I mean that also helps. Appreciate you guys for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to the members. Shout out to the new members. Um, shout out to the regulars. Shout out to the newbies. Shout out to the goats. That's all of you. See you soon. Savage.